Hello and welcome to the Computer Game Show. Uh, my name is James Farley and I'm here with Matt Murray. Hello. Yeah, it's a bit strange because, I mean, normally you'd be hearing two other voices, but neither of them are here uh, today. Uh, it was a bit... It, it wasn't really last minute, was it, Matt? I mean, it came... It was this morning. It was, it was this yeah. morning when, when they both dropped out on the same... Well, I, I think it's... Uh, well, okay, just to clarify, uh, uh, both, both her children are sadly unwell. And um, mm-hmm. so, you know, so they're off for that reason. Uh, Dave was like, you know, Charlie's poorly. I'm like, okay, cool. And then she was like, well, well actually, also, also why is her kids poorly? But just, just a bit late, but we... We we gave them the week off. It's fine. I said, yeah. don't worry about it. We have got this. How are going to be? I think there's probably another reason uh, why Sean isn't here. But let's do the Patreon for Nels members uh, list first. So this month's Patreon producers for this month are uh, Aaron Patrick, Simon Nels, Tom S, Jack Alvin, Moomin Biscuit, uh, Richard Sawyer, Dave Ernsberger, Colm Brown, Gasman, Gabby Pereira. They are the Four Nails crew, and uh, thank you so much uh, for your support. Uh, If you're interested in supporting us on Patreon, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash tcgs, and uh, you can have a look at the different tiers that there are. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate it, so uh, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, honestly, I think there's another reason why Sean's not here. Um, Because, you see, I, I think, when was it? Was it about two weeks ago, there was accusations of, like, passing of wind um, on the show yeah. uh, that went that went on, and I um, mean, everybody obviously pointed the finger at me, and I mean, I, I wasn't going to say that it was definitely not me. Um, no, because cause you've got a track record of farting for three hours on the show. So. Yeah, it, I, I'll admit to that. It's true. I mean, I, that that did happen once yeah. um, because it was a it was a terrible a terrible incident. Um, but the thing is, is this time I was pretty sure it wasn't me, and but then Sean also was was absolutely certain. And uh, but then David has done some detective work um, over the week. Now I know maybe it's not entirely fair to talk about this, seeing as Sean's not here. But I really think that I mean the answers speak for themselves. Um, so I think maybe we'll let David um, explain uh, what happened. So uh, here's here's um, here's David. Let's hear it. Hi everyone, uh, David Turner here. Sorry I can't be here this week. Um, my son's falling ill, so I'm having to look after him tonight. Um, I'm not sure why Sean's not on, but I think maybe he could just smell a stinker a mile off, so he, he thought he'd give it a swerve. Well, that was and a bit. Talking of good, good joke. smelling stinkers, um, one thing we were talking about last week uh, that I've had a few messages in, uh, you know, oh, I was really disappointed David didn't find out who farted on the previous week's show. Um, well, the, the, it's a bit of an interesting one, really. Um, Sean stated that he'd listened to his audio and he hadn't heard uh, anything on his end. So while we were recording, I was listening back to James's of course. Uh, audio. I yeah. just going on a bit, actually isn't it? assumed it was him. He's got he's got history, um, but couldn't find it either. So I got to be embarrassed and thought, oh, you know what, it's, it's probably mine. Um, so I went back and listened to my audio and I couldn't find it either. How long was it going for, really. um, hey, I went you, you back to Sean's. Oh, what happened there? Oh, sorry, my phone went off. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Okay. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> That's wild, yo, and there we go. I, I couldn't find it either. It's a bit confused, really. Oh. And I went What's back to don't worry, don't worry. And, yeah, you can hear the fart on his audio. Um, I will say that it's louder once I've run it through Levelator, which is a piece of software that that brings all the audio up to a certain level. Designed um, for But I'll play for you now. This is Sean's side of his audio isolated, so no other audio yeah, on top of it. it, and run through Levelator. And uh, you can hear the fart on his audio. So, Sean, not sure if he lied about it or he was embarrassed or whatever, but what they say, whoever smelt it, don't Get it. on with it, Sean, David. If you listen to this. <laughs> and, uh, my prediction is that you smelt it. Oh, my God. What do you think of that? I'll see you next week. I mean, what can I say? I mean, he he likes the sound of his own voice, David, but he also, I mean, yeah, he, it's pretty conclusive. I mean, I've also got the audio here isolated. So far, David's um, spoken more on this show than you and I have. Well, no, but it's it's okay because I mean, this is only seven seconds. Uh, but here we go. This is this is uh, this one. is the offending audio. The Hitman Three engine and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's proper good just having them all there. So yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much conclusively uh, proves. Can I hear that and, again? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, that's that's no problem. I mean, we heard the other one again uh, through yeah. technical issues, but uh, yeah. The Hitman 3 engine and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, it's, it's proper good just having them all there. It, I mean, it was indeed proper good, but so um, yeah. But there you go. I mean, that that conclusively proves it. I mean, I'm expecting an apology from Sean because I'm pretty certain he was throwing around accusations um, during that during that episode that it was definitely not him. Obviously, it was me. So uh, well, he's got a lot. He's got a lot of apologising to do, isn't he? He's got to apologise to you and apologise to all the listeners. It's going to be yeah. It's going to be quite the intro uh, next week or whenever Sean uh, decides to come back. Um, well, I mean, I'm, gl- I'm glad that's been put to bed. I mean, I wasn't yeah, on the I mean, show. I look so forward to his feedback. No, no, yeah. no chance of it being me. Thankfully. Yeah. No, um, it, it, I think that's the major fart feedback of last week. Should we get on to the regular feedback? Yeah, let's, from last let's week? do the actual feedback. Go for it. Um, obviously, there was a breaking news about Stadia uh, deciding to cease any first party development. Anthony Dunn and a few others have got in touch. Anthony Dunn says Google recently announced they're closing down Stadia games and entertainment. What are your thoughts on first party exclusive titles? Are they essential for a platform to be successful? I'm a Stadia user and don't massively care about first-party content, but it does concern me that Google are no longer committed to their platform. If Google doesn't think it's worthwhile making games to their platform, why should anybody else? It's a good question. It is a good question. I don't know why I put in feedback, really. Um, in terms of first-party stuff, I, I, no one surely was really using or getting Stadia for the first party. It's all more the fact they can play third parties anywhere. Well, no, I, well, no, because there weren't there weren't any though. But you need, you see, well, this yeah, is exactly. this is being... like we're like years away from any Stadia first party stuff. So yeah, but that's why they shouldn't have launched it without anything. <laughs> like that, that's why it didn't make any sense at all. Like this, none of this made sense. Like they they released it as like a you know in the usual Google way as a, as like a beta like product, didn't they? Really, you know, to sort of yeah, say yeah. like this works or whatever. But they didn't seem to realise that you do need content. You know, it's like opening a cinema, but then having no films like to show. It's it's very well, strange. No, well, no, that doesn't work. It's like you open a cinema and you only have old films to watch. Oh, no, that doesn't well, exactly, work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because people <laughs> like watching old films. So that doesn't work they, either. They do, but they can, they've already played them on many other also, things. Also, that doesn't work at all because no cinema creates their own movies. No, that's true. But this is a bad it's, no, 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 that's not true. Some do. You do. So, okay, some of the studios do own do own cinemas as well. Well, I guess AMC. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad example. Well, they're doing badly. Um, but yeah. yeah. Well, there's plenty more stadium feedback. Let's crack on with it. Go on. Uh, Morton Olsen. Hi, guys. Been listening to the show for years. Love the show, so thanks. About a year ago, I thought I'd rekindle my love for... I hope... I hope damn, is this, a, is this a question or is this feedback? I don't I, I, know. I, I, keep, we'll keep going. I mean, yeah, I we'll need to going populate going. this. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Martin, uh, Martin Olsen. Hi, guys. Been listening for a few years. Love the show. About a year ago, I thought I'd rekindle my love for gaming, which has been on the back burner for years after fathering two children. It does take it out of you, to be fair. I got an Xbox One X with Game Pass and was well made up. The console was awesome, and I finally got to play Outer Worlds, which mostly lived up to ex- expectations and was an absolute joy. After a while, I realized I wasn't really enjoying Game Pass, and that was falling into a pattern of aimlessly browsing downloading loads of stuff then staring at my huge games library and not really wanting any more of it too much choice ended up hurting my joy or um my joy of it all so i cancelled game pass and bought a game i really wanted to play life is strange which i proceeded to enjoy immensely probably on my all-time top three that one so i for one did not welcome the possible future of subscribing to all uh, to all you can eat style services which brings me to stadia like you guys uh, I've been shaking my head from the start when I saw the weird business model and the missing features, but my interest was sparked because I wanted to play Cyberpunk 2077 and most certainly did not want to play it on the Xbox. So I installed the Stadia app on my Chromecast with Google TV, a lovely Google-made Apple TV little device and a remote and a proper UI, paired my Xbox One controller with the thing and bought Cyberpunk, and it has been a revelation. There's obviously no download or patches to wait for, and it's the most frictionless gaming I've tried so far. I don't have to turn on the console, switch inputs on the TV, download patches, etc. I just start the app and launch the game. It is fast, and the actual experience of playing it is top-notch. No artifacts or perceived lag, and now I can sneak in a cheeky session at the office or my laptop as well when I feel like it. So to my great surprise, I've gone from Skeptic to being all in on the new streaming services, even poor Stadia. The Google TV box also runs GeForce Now beautifully. To me, this feels much more next-gen than next-gen consoles, not having to worry about downloads, patches, cables, which platform to choose, etc. But having all available on all my devices feels proper next-gen. When I'm done with Life is Strange 2, the Xbox will probably be moved to the kids' room or sold. All I want to keep for the main telling now is the Switch. Cheers. Keep up the good work. 
See that this is the thing though. This is what we keep going over with this, like over and over and over. It's like it works. We know that Stadia works. And okay, you've got Cyberpunk, which is clearly like a good example of, you know, how this this can work like in a in a really good way. But there's still not enough things to make you think, okay, I'm going to just shift my whole thing over to over to Stadia instead. It's that that's where the problem but, is. But as David said, and and last week, and we've said like for years, this isn't, or you know, what well, it has been years. Um, it it feels like Stadia was never going to be everyone, you know, to get rid of everything else is and all in on Stadia. This is like something to supplement the games you may have on your console at home, but if you want to play them on the move, or you know, if you're commuting or hotel, or or, or you know, or want to play at work. Like, that, that, that's what I think this is for. It's not. It's not like oh, I'm going to ditch on my consoles. I'm just a Stadia player. It like you have something. You have it to to complement what you've already got. But that's true. That obviously, is enough for a business model. Well, it's not because you also need to, as we keep also saying, it's the content, isn't it? Like having like the games on there that you actually want to play. Because this is somewhere where I really think XCloud is going to do very very well because they've got all of this content that they can just, you know, they can pipe to people. Whereas with Stadia, the big problem has been content. The fact that, okay, you've had Cyberpunk, but what else has there been? You know, that's sort of really been something that people have been, like, talking about, that's got a buzz going. You know, that's Farming made people simulator? Think, well, exactly. I mean, if you the other day, it was sad. I got one of those emails saying, like, look what's coming in February. And it was all stuff that's been out on other stuff for ages. And it's just, it's just sad, you know, when you see that. And this is why, I mean, I did not, want Stadia to like massively fail or do as badly as it seems to have done. Oh really? But didn't sound well, like it you know, for the last few months well, of reporting. You know, well, you know, it's just you know, it's interesting to see massive tech companies, you know, arrogantly think that they can, you know, move into spaces like this without seemingly researching it properly. I mean this is what I always find really interesting about stuff like Stadia is that you've got you know, these huge companies, people often seem to think that they can't you know, they can't do any wrong, that you know, things will always work out. But they also make mistakes as well. They're completely fallible. And Stadia is an example of that, I think. But, you know, interesting. What, yeah. what else have we got? Um, yeah, we've got more. So Johnny5, I was interested in hearing you discuss Stadia on the last episode. I've had a Switch since launch, but no other console since a PS3. Uh, I started looking at Stadia in October and was surprised about how well it worked on my Mac. I pre-ordered a Cyberpunk and got the Chromecast and Pad offer, then ended up spending most of my time playing Destiny 2. I ended up buying the Destiny expansions in a sale and I have been working my way through them while also spending time on various other games I've missed out on. Not having a current gen console makes the Stadia proposition really compelling to me. Buying something and playing it instantly without downloading or patching anything is amazing uh, when the only time I get to play is an hour or so before bed. I've looked into Game Pass Ultimate since the last show and it sounds like fantastic value for money. It falls apart though being an Apple user as I have no way to use it on my current devices. I briefly started looking at Xboxes, but they're not so easily available. And even if I did get one, it would be 450 quid outlay, and then I have to download and patch things locally. When Microsoft get iOS support and some kind of TV dongle, then Game Pass will be a Stadia competitor for me. I realise game without a console is a small niche, and maybe that's why Stadia have rethought their approach. It sounded on the show like none of you actually used it properly with the pad and Chromecast Ultra. I was so happy that I actually picked up a second Stadia Premier Kit from eBay for the kitchen TV. If you're interested, I'll be happily lend uh, lend it to you so you can try it out for a bit. Give me a PM. That's a really kind offer, Johnny Five. I mean, I, it, it's no point for me because I wouldn't play it. it I, I want to see it, and that's kind of that's why I was really close to buying it, just just, just to see what it would be like. But after five minutes, I'm like, okay, well, there you go. I've uh, I mean, I've got Cyberpunk on this Xbox Series X, and I'm not playing it because because I've got no interest in that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in Cyberpunk, that is. I mean, he, I mean, he has got a very good point though about the about like the Apple support and everything for stuff with XCloud because that is something I'm I'm concerned about and it is very irritating. I mean, I had this this week because I was thinking, okay, maybe I can use. There's an app called OneCast uh, that you can use for like Apple TV. Yeah, uh, I remember so you that mentioned you can that stream. Ago, didn't you? Yeah, so you can stream from uh, your, you know, from your Xbox to like, you know, Apple TV or to iPad or whatever like that. But it turns out that now uh, Microsoft seems to have removed the option to be able to do that, and you can only do it through the official app. And what I always find incredibly irritating about this is that Microsoft only ever release like the app for like for Windows PC, so there's no Mac version for it. But then also like there there is an iPad version, but there's no there's no Apple TV version. I mean, I know that there's you know there's not 
you know, millions and millions of Apple TV users in the UK, but it still would be handy just to have the like the client on there as well. So then you could um, you know you could remote play you know using that. I mean, I'm hoping something like that is coming because with XCloud, if they want this on everything, they want everybody you know to be using XCloud and Game Pass Ultimate and everything. It makes sense you know to have all these things on everything, but they don't at the moment. Which is it's a shame. still technically in beta, right? XCloud. Or, yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, they should absolutely learn from Apple. I mean, Apple, I've got Apple TV, the Apple TV Plus app, which is their subscription TV, you know, service. That's on everything. It's on Samsung TVs. It's on every console. It's 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 everywhere. Like they need to learn that if this wants to be, if XCloud to get as big as they need it to be, put an X, put an XCloud app on everything they can. I mean, I there's no way Apple will be like, no, you can't do that. There is that iCloud, what's it called, XCloud like iOS um, thing coming, isn't there? Like where they're going to use the web browser, which well, we'll see how that works. Maybe it'll be good, maybe it won't. We don't really know, but we'll see. Yeah, it is a worry. I mean, when they first announced, oh, the, the XCloud beta was going to have just Halo Master Chief Collection on it, whereas Android is out already and had loads of games. I was like, I was genuinely thinking about, maybe I'd, maybe I'd get a Samsung instead of a new iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that, that probably would have been silly given that... Um, given that I, you know, how much am I really going to play on xCloud? But still, I'm still interested in it. I mean, I, I've used remote, remote Play actually a fair mm-hmm. bit. Um, yeah, me on too. Mostly, mostly to log in games um, for Microsoft reward points. But um, <laughs> but I used it a, a fair amount. Um, and and But I think, as I said ages ago, I still don't really know how xCloud properly fits into my lifestyle, especially now we're not leaving the house. But even when I was leaving the house, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Well, I don't see it being a full-time thing for me i still have found remote play incredibly useful especially now that it does work on ipad and like so i can you know i mean i've been playing the medium on using the ipad app you know the the microsoft app on on ipad but i've been using like a playstation controller and it works absolutely fine like oh, nice. it's 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 really weird but it works absolutely fine and uh it's been it's been great and the yeah, performance is good it's pretty much the same as the remote play you know the playstation one as well it's um i, I really like this as an option but yeah i don't think it's uh, the future kind of thing yeah because i think in the uh, you know not to get a winter face for a second but the latest beta for next iOS offering you know 14.5 that's got support for series x and yeah. ps5 pads isn't it mm-hmm. i'll tell you what though it's been really interesting like listening to and reading like all these people like talking about stadia you know and like going on about you know how important you know, how the great it is they think it is and all that kind of thing and you know how it works and everything it really i was saying to sean this is terrible but it really reminds me of like amiga owners in the mid 90s that were like <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was clear that it was it was not working out you know things were not working out but they still persisted you know with it and you know it's it'd be yeah, interesting but to see all the correspondence we've got and read and seen it's like these don't feel, these aren't people who get stadia tattoos it's like it's just easier and i'm not a hardcore gamer so mm-hmm. this for me is is a great different option. Well, yeah, that's that's fine. But seems Google don't agree with you. So um, yeah, no, we'll see how it works out. But yeah, it's, uh, it's sad. Uh, moving yeah. on from Stadia, um, Solvent has got in touch. James just wanted to point out it wasn't fair that David lambasted you for not playing Medium for your whole what you be what you've been playing section. Only for it to turn out neither had he or Sean. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> I mean Sean that's... and David, the uh, people who don't like horror games. Exactly. I mean that's that's the only thing with that is because I I like those games and that's I think that's probably why David was having a go. Is like, it's like why haven't you played it yet? Because he's yeah I've got a history of playing them. But yeah, they could. I mean they could have given it a go though. At least you know it's it was free. Well you know part of Game Pass they could have had a. Had I a think try David's just lashing out because he hasn't got a PS Five. It's just that's true. Finding yeah. ways to you know it's just just annoyed. It's just, mm. it because you really you should have been in the PS5 OS just enjoying it because yeah. he can't you know yeah. whereas you I, you you're you're playing Xbox games when you've got a PlayStation Five there just doing nothing. I mean I do do that sometimes. I sometimes switch the PS5 on and just sort of like film it and then send them to him. You know just to <laughs> just to, I, I don't. Yeah, it's do a that ve- it's a very yeah. soothing OS um, mm-hmm. in terms of uh, in terms of uh, you know the sounds it puts out. I'm still not a massive fan of the OS. Mm-hmm. Uh, really? We'll talk about what you've been playing, but I played a lot more PlayStation Five last week. I'm still like, mm, still not, still feels more awkward to me. I don't know, but yeah, anyway, go on. Yuji we'll Naka's neighbor has uh, oh, the oh, Yuji Naka's neighbor has uh, got in touch. Excuse the language, but your claim on last week's show is Codswallop. I can assure you that Sonic Guy, 
uh, did you slagged off, did not port over an iPhone game. I know because I live next door to him. Every time I've gazed at my back garden over the last couple of months, I've seen Nakasan busy performing the same walk animation of Balan Wonderworld's <laughs> main character and putting his muscles at great risk while recreating the signature tornado jump. This was done in front of a camera from what I could see, and the hard work seems to have paid off because those moves perfectly matched the motions of each character in the demo. So yes, Yuji Naka has put in a great amount of effort over the last eight weeks to get things done right, and it's time you appreciate the work. Well, I, I mean, I certainly do because I downloaded the game again on Switch. Um, to, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, to give that a Would go. you say you're addicted to downloading Balan Wonderworld demos? Yeah, I mean, I need to download it on PlayStation as well because I'm trying to get a balanced viewpoint of like how it's oh, like you know how foundry. it's been. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> you, should, oh, you should absolutely do a side by side comparison. Just you know, the hard hitting. You know, just talk about the frame rates and stuff. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, I, I assume we're going to talk more about Balan Wonderworld later. I absolutely am. I, I played some more of it, and I mean, I played it uh, on. Uh, what's it? I streamed it uh, last week. And, oh, you did, uh, yeah. But then I also discovered some things about it as well that I didn't know um, in the last couple of days. So yeah, look forward to it's, that. It's a demo that keeps on giving. Uh, the, yeah. That is it for feedback. But if if you listening out here messaged us last week asking us something, and we haven't been able to respond, it's because you didn't leave your contact details. So if you're out there and you messaged us and you're wondering why you may not have got a response, then message us again with your contact details. Hopefully that's that's clear enough. Uh, that is it for feedback. Go to tcgs.co slash dear tcgs to leave us feedback or questions at any time of day. It's yeah. time for the news now, isn't it, James? It is the news, and there's been, there has been some news this week. Um, it's not, been all right. I, it's, it's, it was largely quiet, and it's kind of more things happened in the last 24 hours or so, didn't they? As, as generally happens, which is quite <laughs> irritating. Because, I mean, as you know, I usually prepare this on Sunday evening, and uh, then things happen, and it's it's quite annoying. Yes, that's fine, but Monday for news is that's that's a good day for news to drop, isn't it? Monday. I know, I know. It's 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 so always been my Achilles it. heel, you know. With this, is it is a problem, but uh, I'm busy. I've got things to do. But uh, anyway, um, so E3 is going to still happen. Uh, yes. So the ESA, I mean, the ESA are, are still going forward with plans for a digital 2021 event. This is good. So, this is great. This is what we need. Last year showed us. I mean, yes, maybe everyone's, you know, struggling to quickly react to the, you know, COVID world and stuff. But last year was just a mess, wasn't it? In terms of it was an absolute shows mess. all over the summer. And it's just, we want a, an E3 show to bring everything together. Well, do you want to hear some of the details? And you can tell me whether you think this sounds good. This. Right. So these are the proposals from the ESA. So they're saying there's going to be three days of live streamed coverage uh, held during the previously announced dates of June 15th to the 17th. So that's when it will Lovely be stuff. going yeah, perfect. on. Perfect. So the intention is to hold multiple two-hour keynote sessions from games partners. So presumably that'd be like publishers and like yeah, you know, yeah. companies that kind of thing. There'll be an award show, a June the 14th preview night. And then also all these other sort of smaller streams from game publishers, influencers, I love them, and media partners, as they call them. And then, so then what will happen is the broadcast event will then be supplemented by these media previews um, the week before. So presumably that's going to mean like sort of, you know, trailers and videos and stuff. And then there'll be yeah. like demos that will get released on like, you know, Switch and on like PlayStation and Xbox and stuff like that. That's So this is the ESA's proposal. Yeah. And then... They're also saying that they're going to allow partner companies to remotely stream playable game demos to media, like to, you know, so they, they can have like scheduled meetings. So, okay. you know, like before, you know, people go and they chat with them and play it. And so you can do that over the internet instead. Yeah. But if you want to do this, you have to obviously, you know, be part of the ESA and you also have to pay them as well. And uh, also, I mean, this hasn't reached um, approval yet uh, for, you know, for what's going to happen. But yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay, I, I know there's a tone in your voice at the beginning of this piece to say, <laughs> oh, he frees back, but this is, this is what we want, isn't it? Is it? Is well, it? Yeah, well, we, and also, loads of these things, this is what they do anyway, like, let's go through these things, like, uh, uh, June 14th preview night, like, the, the 14th, which typically is, like, say, that this is a Sunday, mm -hmm. that, that is when, we, you know, we see the start of the conferences and the EA might do a show, but we would see, like, some preview things in, in the coming in the days up to it so that doesn't seem that new really mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's still with three days of coverage. Like it's still gonna have it's like it's still gonna have all the all the live the live shows. And in terms of the demos being streamed, like I, I've heard on loads of podcasts over the last like few months that that's just being a, a thing now. You know, for people to demo games, outlets are viewing and playing online demos, and and they say it works really well. So none of this seems particularly new. And this is exactly what we want. Surely, what's the alternative? Last year was just a mess. Well, okay, but then the thing is, right, is if you're, so if you want to be part of this, presumably you'll have to pay the ESA as well. Like the article, this was from Video Games Chronicle, and they've, they've like, sort of blown the story on this, but it doesn't really detail here whether, um, you know, what the payment will be or whatever, but presumably, you know, publishers will have to pay the ESA. So I'm thinking if I'm a publisher, why would I pay the ESA for this when I can just hold my own event? You know, why would you do that? It doesn't yeah. seem to make any sense. So obviously, know, to... they have these people have been paying ESA to attend E3. Yeah. So, but you could just say, well, why attend E3? Why not just, um, why not just do your own event somewhere else and not be part of E3? But, that's different, isn't it? Like an online event is not. I mean, logistically, obviously, it is also a mess and a nightmare. But um, you know, doing it. Um... Sorry, we just lost Craig. Didn't oh, we? Not, not again. Okay, that's fine. We'll carry on. Okay. Yeah, so organizing like an online event is probably less difficult, probably, than something, you know, than like some massive sort of, uh, you know, conference event and everything where you've got people yeah, coming I and do that get kind that. of stuff. And I was thinking, okay, well, you know, if you're part of E3, that's like, you know, that's good for publicity, but <laughs> most of people, well, the larger ones will not need that because they, they, you know, they're owning that themselves. But they've um, also got one other significant problem here. Jeff Keighley is not on board. He's not. Uh, he's not going to be involved. He's he's going ahead with Summer Games Fest. So it's still going to be a mess oh, like this the really, end of summer. Oh, I didn't realize that. Hang on. Yeah. So, but, but but we don't know when the Summer Games Fest is, right? That that won't be. No, oh, last, but you know, it'll, last year it lasted. <laughs> come on, so that went on for like six months, didn't it, or something? It'll go on for ages. I hope he's got feedback on that. And like Jeff, we don't. We could, don't, please don't have it for six months. Just have Summer Games Fest would have been way better if it was one week, a festival, <laughs> five days. Don't do it for like six months. It was just a mess. Like, yeah, so maybe part of the, re- the issue last year was because we had E3 was just suddenly gone and people were trying to react and trying to do their own shows. And then Games Fest happened or was happening for months at a time. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think a three day proper E3 event. It is definitely a good thing. I think last year we desperately, desperately miss that. Not not just us as you know, who we want to talk about on podcasts and and do this that, and the other with it. But it's just I think gaming missed like a a focal point. Whereas last year it's just ah all over the place. Um, so, so I yeah, completely this, agree this is, with you. This is great. I'm excited for this. I completely agree with you. I think it is better when everything is sort of focused around one event over a you know a shorter period of time. I just can't see how anybody's going to sign up for this. Like, I mean, obviously people will, but I mean, like the big publishers, like people that, um, you know, going to be, I mean, Microsoft and Sony, they're still going to want to run their own events. They're not going to partner with this probably, I wouldn't imagine. No, maybe. I, I've just read actually in this piece that um, the VGC say it's, it's a six-figure sum required wow. to, to okay. join. So, so there you go. Like, who's yeah, going to do that? Why are people going to pay a million quid when they could just say, oh, you know what? We've got a show happening on June the fifteenth. It's not part of E three, like it's some small print. I don't know, but yeah, yeah it's just like, like ESA can't say Microsoft don't do a live stream between the days of fifteenth and seventeenth. Don't do that. They yeah, can do it. Just be like, <laughs> they can do just it. Check out they want. YouTube. Yes, yeah. something might be happening on those days. But yeah, I don't know. I just can't see why anyone, especially paying that kind of money, would be insane. Like, why would you do that? I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I think have E three. What they're saying it sounds good, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to be fascinated to know whether people will want to sign up to this and how many are going to sign up and what that's going to mean. Uh, but it's, what is awesome is you know there'll be there'll be um, there'll be demos out. I mean, like that that, that happened uh, like Steam uh, Steam Demo Festival, whatever it's called at the moment, some, where they have like loads of demos to play for limited time. That's out at the moment. That's really cool for PC gamers. But mm-hmm. we've um, we've never really had much of like a Okay, loads of demos are out now to play for E3. That's like a new thing in the last few years, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. Which so, speaking, no, I, I mean, that's I, I think that's great. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, I'd be fascinating to know what it's going to look like and who's actually going to get involved. I know. I think it just feels a bit like I mean, the ESA must be hurting like 
for cash or whatever. And this must be, you know, because they can't run any events or anything like that at the moment. So maybe yeah. this is some way that they're thinking they can claw something back, which is a shame. It, but, it, the funny thing is that like, this might be the thing that kills off E3. Just the fact, well, one, obviously, COVID, well, E3 was on its last legs anyway, and then COVID happened. Mm-hmm. And then everyone's like, well, we'll do it ourselves. And then, yeah. and then he says, like, well, you can come back if you want, but it's going to cost a million quid. You know what? Nah. Would you like some stadia news, Matt? Oh my god, I thought I thought last week we agreed there would be no more stadia news until it ended. So absolutely. Well, I would like I mean, obviously, I mean we don't want to keep ragging on the thing, you know, because I mean it's you not have right. done for the last eighteen months, but Well no, not I mean, just whenever there's been a story, you know, you have to report what's going on. And uh, I mean <laughs> well, some something's happened. So, you know, is it Terraria is the Terraria game? Terraria is the game. Yeah. So that was going to be coming out on Stadia, but it's now been cancelled because the Google the developer got locked out of his Google account, um, which is kind of crazy. So what this was, was he's cancelled this because he, he explained that he's lost access to all of his Google accounts, including Google Play, Google Drive, YouTube and Gmail. He tried to recover them for like the last three weeks or so, but is he says that he's been given the runaround by Google. Like he's not been able to you know, sort of get into it. And then he made a statement. He said, I absolutely have not done anything to violate your terms of service, so I can take this no other way than you deciding to burn this bridge. Um, <laughs> he says, consider it burnt. Terraria for Google Stadia is cancelled. My company will no longer support any of your platforms moving forward. I will not be involved with a corporation that values their customers and partners so little. Doing business with you is a liability. So, yeah, that's not coming. And uh, But that's really weird, isn't it? I mean... It, unc- Am I being weird? It just feels like two separate incidents. Like he's forgotten his password or whatever. Yeah. And then he's like kicking off. I, I, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's part of Google, but it's not, it's not, it's not the same, is it? I can understand why he's very angry because the yes. same thing has happened to me before, like where I've, I've nearly got locked out of like accounts and then managed, fortunately managed to get back in. And it is, it's a nightmare, like when you're trying to do that. And oh then, God, but there I'm is so, I'm also so happy. I thought you were going to say a bit of Nest was not coming out on Stadia because you haven't got into your Google Plus account. Yeah. <laughs> but thankfully, that's, that's being rectified. But I can also understand Google's point of view as well because they are, like, they have to be really careful with the security side of things in the sense that, you know, they can't just, like, give up, you know, passwords and, like, access codes, you know, just because somebody says they are who they are and, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it is very difficult. But this is a bit weird, isn't it? It does feel a bit like, I don't know. What do you think, Matt? I just think, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, loads, loads of people accidentally get locked out of all their accounts and it's like a total nightmare to get back if you haven't got, you know, two-factor on or any ways to prove who you are who you are. But this is, it's just like, you know what, I've locked out my account, therefore nothing's going on Stadia now. I say I'm not making my game for your, it's just, I don't know, it feels like it's not even related well, I think it is in the sense I think he's just really angry with Google. Oh, yeah. like, he's angry, and he's like, "Well, f- fuck it, I'm, I'm, I'm not making, it. I'm not putting the game on your, on your Google State." I don't know. For me, it's it doesn't feel related, but he's just like, "Let's find a way to, you know, put the boot in on Stadia because yeah. because something's happened to my Google account, which must happen to thousands of people every day." I get it's annoying. Or maybe maybe he's hoping that this will get attention and then they'll deal with it. And it'll be fixed or whatever. I don't know. It's. I mean, he was quite annoyed because it said that he couldn't watch the Lord of the Rings 4K version that he just bought, and uh, he was irritated by that as well. So I mean, yeah, maybe I this wouldn't is have like bought a... it on. Um, I, if you if you could get Lord of the Rings 4K, get get the 4K Blu-ray. It's gonna be way better than like a stream off um, Google, yeah, Google Play Store. It, it won't be proper 4K. It'll look like, it'll look like ass. Get get the and Blu-ray. Also... And you you always own it as well if you buy the Blu-ray as well. You know, it's, yeah. they can't can't be taken away from you. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I'm excited to hear next week. I've got my accounts back. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad you figured Terraria out of the pram. Yeah, I don't know. Have you played okay. Terraria? Have, have your kids played Terraria? No, they haven't actually. I mean, it's very similar to Minecraft. Yeah, like yeah. As in, I know. I know it's like 2D and like you're sort of digging and all that sort of stuff. But I don't really know hardly anything about it. Which no, means I, I mean, I've, I've but, yeah. played it. Um, although it is um, one of my games to play this month for Microsoft points. Um, oh. so, so I, I'll, I look forward I'll, to hearing about I'll report, it. I'll report. No, it's free. It's free on Game Pass, isn't it? Hmm. Um, but yeah, I heard it looked basically like a 2D Minecraft. But I, I, it's it's obviously it's massive. But I so mm. I assumed. Yeah, you, know, you know, your kids have played it. But I guess Minecraft is a thing, isn't it? To play, what's the point of playing to area? Yeah. Well, you know, all those people that love Stadia, unfortunately, you're 
you're not going to be able to play Terraria. If so. only there wasn't like a thousand platforms elsewhere to play Terraria, but um, yeah, shame. It's a real shame. So uh, Sony have also bought a stake in um, From Software. Well, not From Software themselves, but in the parent company of uh, From Software. So they've formed this financial partnership uh, with this conglomerate, which is called uh, Kedokawa Corporation. Uh, you know, that sort of own them. But uh, yeah, I mean, this this makes sense, doesn't it, I guess? But, I mean, seeing as a lot of From Software stuff, you know, has been on PlayStation, some of it only on PlayStation. And yeah. I think from, from Sony's perspective... They've got to do something, haven't they? <laughs> because you can't, like, before Microsoft comes along and just gobbles it up. Yeah, but, I mean, but, but what, what is this really going to do? I mean, is this going to stop Elden Ring coming out on Xbox? Nah, I don't think <laughs> it will they change any... percent of a, another company? It won't change any of the publication stuff. I think it just is something to try and prevent, you know, other takeovers, I think, is all that would be. I doubt it will actually change anything in a, in a big way. Yeah, I, I saw this and thought, oh, that's interesting. But um, I, I'm surprised Sony haven't made bigger acquisitions already i thought they would have seen microsoft doing what they're doing and thought oh, let's just buy konami let's 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 nick someone before before microsoft does but yeah quite so far yeah never mind um also uh street fighter 2 is now 30 years old it's Man. um yeah from i mean what what is okay so this i mean it came out in 1991 and obviously, it spawned loads of stuff like the Van Damme film and the sequels and all that kind of stuff. Were you into this, Matt? Because I uh, was. I, Were I, you I, not? I was never really into. The only fighting game I so the first fighting game I vaguely liked was Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly because like, wow, it's like you can you know you can it's all gory now, isn't it? Uh, but I never really got into fighting games and and didn't have any Nintendo consoles. And I just saw like Street Fighter like a SNES thing. Um, yeah, did it even I come mean, out on Mega Drive? It didn't, did yeah, it? Yeah, of course it did. No, oh, okay, it just well. came out on Mega Drive. I mean, it, it was horrendous playing it with a three-button pad because you had to, like, you, you could press the start button to switch between punches and kicks, which was really annoying. Oh my God. And also, the uh, what's called the Mega Drive um, D-pad, it was really, like, hard as well. So it was really <laughs> yeah. horrible for doing, like, um, you know, dragon punches and stuff. Yeah. Just, you know, I remember no, getting I, lots I of never, blisters. I was never into fighting games. And, yeah, Mortal Kombat for a bit and then Soul Calibur, but that's pretty much been it. Oh, and Mark Fighters Mega Mix, I guess, mm-hmm. and Virtua Fire. But, yeah, but... No, I wasn't wasn't into two D ones that, that much really. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I I, I love Street Fighter too. I played it a lot uh, with people, uh, particularly in school. Like we played it all the time. We used to come home from school and go through it. I mean, even one of my friends again, he had an Amiga and he had the he had the uh, the Amiga version of it, which uh, which was really bad. It was a yeah, terrible, God. terrible. You know port. that friend who owned an Amiga? Do you still talk to them? Uh, sometimes, um, yeah. I mean, they're really into Google Stadia now. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, it's I, I was a big fan, and I still, I mean, I still listen to the soundtrack sometimes because it's you know it's an all timer. It's, it's yeah, the soundtrack to Street Fighter Two is amazing. It's really oh. good. It's like one of the best. It's yeah, it's yeah, it's super. I've, n- I've never got into like video game music. Really? I, I, okay, so recent ones I listened to like Outer Wild soundtrack because that, that, yeah. that was just gorgeous. But yeah, I've never got like you obviously see like podcasts and all sorts like just just focus on video game music. Well, I've never mm-hmm. really. I've never understood or got into it. No, but this okay, particularly from the 16 bit era, there's some really good, like, there's some really good stuff, you know, that came out during that period. It's all the same, though. It's all chip tune, isn't it? No, it's not, though, because then also the other thing that you get is that you get the massive difference between, like, the Super NES and the the Mega Drive, like, because they had different, like, sound chips, and they they both had different strengths and weaknesses, and it's really interesting to, like, you know, to listen to those, and yeah, it's it's great. I mean, like, for example, Street Fighter 2, the Super NES, like, version of that sounds so much better than the Mega Drive one, but then the Mega Drive had some really, really good soundtracks with stuff, obviously, like, Streets of Rage, but then you know, even like um, I, the other day, I was listening to the the Terminator Two the arcade game soundtrack. It's brilliant. What? It's really how good. Do, how do you find yourself listening to that? It's just you know, just sometimes you're on YouTube and you're just like, oh, I remember that from when I was when I was a child. I want to hear that again, and it brings back the nostalgia. Sound. You know, the whole thing. It's um, what, what's wrong with Taylor Swift? <sighs> what's right with Taylor Swift? Just, don't answer that. Don't don't answer that question. <laughs> um, I got I got a question actually. Do you call it Super NES and not SNES? Um, I don't know. As I said, no, that, the last three times you mentioned it, you've just said Super NES. I know because you see, that's the thing. Because I was think, I was thinking, okay, how do I say this? And I went with Super NES, but I could have said SNES, and I wasn't sure which one to go for. But I went with Super NES, and I don't know why. It's, it's just defi- a, it was it's, panic. I mean, it's definitely SNES for me. It, it's mad when you hear like American podcasts and they say like SNES. Yeah, I wouldn't it's say like, that. That's, what yeah. to say SNES? I mean, I mean, yeah. I say SNES with a Z. So uh, it's Super NES anyway. Yeah. I know, um, okay. Snares, yeah, for but, yeah. years, I mean, that's that's unbelievable. It's a shame they never made any other ones. 
Have you have you never played like Street Fighter four or five or anything like that, like the nah. new ones? No. Nah. I don't so even know if I played Street Fighter two or the first wow. one. I can't believe that. It's it's uh, no, that is quite un- unbelievable in a sense because that was such like a sort of I don't know like a cultural phenomenon, and I just can't believe that you yeah you've yeah, not played it. My, my, we were playing FIFA. <laughs> you know, that's all. You know, an FM gym and stuff on the Mega Drive, and you know, cannon fodder. Um, no, mm. I mean, no, me and none of my mates from school were into fighting games. Um, so yeah, the only one I made to vaguely go into fighting games was my friend called Derek, and he because he had he, when he got the N sixty four, he got Killer Instinct. And oh, um, yeah. no one played him because it was unbelievable at the game. Um, so, so, so that was ruined. Uh, yeah, just none of, none of my mates are into fighting games, and just like so, so it, whole things passed me by. Have you never seen the Street Fighter Two film either, or Street Fighter film? Uh, I doubt it. No, I don't think so. I don't remember. Oh man, I wish we could do a talks over for that because it would be so good. But unfortunately, <laughs> we can't. I mean, it's 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 like John Cole Van Damme as as yeah, Guile yeah. and Kyle and Minogue and yeah, and Kyle Minogue yeah. and it's 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 a, it's awful. It's a terrible, terrible film, but very entertaining. Yeah, because of that, it's um, yeah. It's... Well, we should look into you know, like people do commentaries, don't they? We like yeah. record it and some you press play and then you press play on act. Uh, I mean, I definitely should do that. I think it'd be dreadful. Yeah. Well, happy thirtieth Street Fighter. Yeah, I mean. Speaking of nostalgia, uh, Channel Four is rebooting Games Master as well. Uh, this is this is happening. So, oh god, yeah, they're planning to bring it to E4. I mean, do you want to hear the pitch uh, for this? Um, yes and no. I've I've already seen it, so, but I'm I, it scares me. Go on. Okay, so they're saying it's going to be what they're calling a social first show. That's uh, a bit that followed, scares me. I don't know what that means. Uh, followed by E4 TX and all four box set. What's E4 TX? I don't even know what that is. Uh, I assume it's E4 Terrestrial. Really? But, okay. but I don't know. I don't know. I've Transmission? No Who knows? Uh, so this is the format. So it's going to revolve, obviously it's going to revolve around celebrities, because of course it has to. Uh, yeah, but, but against the original each had other. celebrities on, so yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, I know, but it was also fun when they are members of the public as well. You know, that was that was. Well, that that was might funny. still happen. That might still happen. I don't know. Well, either, either way, what's going to happen is each week they're going to compete against each other. And they says this year, so they're going to have five celebrities are going to, they're saying, I can't, actually, I can't just read the, the yeah, yeah, statement because it it's seriously, funnier. Because he it deserves it. This year, five bold celebrities will embark on a gaming odyssey, but only one can go on to become the Games Master Champion and take home the golden joystick. They'll undergo challenges, races and fights in virtual battles across all genres of gaming under the watchful eye of the all-knowing Games Master. Each leak, each each leak, each week at least one celeb will be eliminated. Over the three episodes, five will become one, and the winner will be crowned. They'll play each other at everything from iconic classics to brand new releases. We'll also be serving tons of extra gaming themed content to our audiences to keep them coming back for more. And then so it says the list of social segments include the contender, meet the gamer. Ga- <laughs> no thank you <laughs> gaming odyssey games master trailers Ooh. speed runs extended playthroughs uh new release previews tips from the games master that that'll be the best bit tips. <laughs> download this dlc tips for and example cheats. yeah and gaming news it says uh so yeah i mean for anybody that doesn't know who is not from the uk or whatever i mean games master was a very was quite a long-running um so video game years, TV, yeah, yeah, this, yeah which ran on channel four here for quite some time and, uh, and it was and quite it's good regarded as like the, the best gaming show that's ever been and ever will be probably but Mostly because it was funny uh, was the reason because it didn't really take itself terribly seriously and uh, yeah it was a bit of a joke but in a in a good way it it kind of worked uh, but this what do you think of this this sounds I don't know what right. do you think, Matt when I heard they said it's a social first show I'm like oh god what what is this what is this shit gonna be and yeah and I you know I like that I genuinely like you know when they have all oh, social first like, like an internet thing that sounds cool but like what does that even really mean <laughs> but actually. So I just had a cough there. Um, but actually, I think they just mean that all those segments you just read out, it's going to be with the public and people probably send in their own videos and they'll do Vox Pops. Or So I think so. when I hear social first, I get worried. But actually, I think it's just that they're going to have, you know, loads of people, regular people do segments and stuff as well, I reckon. Yeah, maybe. The biggest question here is who's going to present it? And there's a bit of a hint, isn't there? Well, no, there's, there's, no. Okay, one of the questions is who's going to present it, but the other one is who's going to be the games master. 
Very true. Yeah, according to Channel 4's website, it, there was a picture of Patrick Stewart next to it. So, I mean, that, that could be interesting, maybe. I'm yeah, not Patrick sure. Stewart, I think it'd be, I think it'd be great. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the idea that the Games Master is still going to be, I, I don't, that's, that to me isn't essential. Okay, but, but am I mad for thinking that if they did Games Master and there's no Games Master? I'm like, are they going to... What? What's that bit going to be about, really? Well, Matt, who's going to do the tips and the cheats if there's no Games Master? Very good point. Very, very... Uh, I mean, yeah, so uh, Sir Patrick Stewart, to use his mm-hmm. full title, that, that could be brilliant. Who's going to present now? I mean, I would love Dominic Diamond to come back. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, I don't know if he'd be interested or not. Probably, probably no. not. I think last I heard, I think he's doing you know, like radio in Canada. So he's probably, mm-hmm. probably the last thing he wants to come back and do. But okay, but it's 2021. Who who are they going to bring in to present this thing? Because there could be a whole host of terrible ideas, couldn't there? Well, Dexter Fletcher might be free. No, I'm, I'm worried it's going to be like someone like brand new. Really? Yeah. I mean, maybe they can get somebody who was on Big Brother or something like that. That's probably where they'll go i'd imagine they're not going to bring anyone back they were like oh that'd be amazing if they came back and did. Oh, actually no i've just i've just thought who is who it's going to be go on. and i i'm i can't work out at this precise second if it's a good thing or a bad thing but um i've got um, my bet is it's going to be richard aodi aodi that you pronounce his surname aodi yeah aodi yeah i reckon it'll be him he did a good job doing crystal maze he feels like it's the right amount of kind of snark and humour and yeah, that's my pick. Not, not that I think he'll be the best at a job, but I reckon that that could be definitely someone in the mix. How about you? Who, who do I you think, think could do it? If they got him, I would definitely be up for watching because I think that'd be brilliant. And I think you're right. I think he would be perfect. Um, but yeah, whether that happens or not. I mean, is it, does anyone have any suggestions? Write in, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> please write in. <laughs> yeah. um, who, who knows what this could be like? I mean, Games Master was, for me, like special show, a, a great time. And, you know, at, at school, fully massively, you know, into games. And it was like, it, it felt new and exciting because you saw like previews of games you never heard of and tips and cheats and stuff. <laughs> Obviously, it's very different these days. You know, people get news in a second from Twitter or YouTube and stuff. So very interested to know what it's going to be like. But yeah, I can't wait to see what they do with it. See, the trouble is, is I'm just not interested in watching celebrities play games. I don't care. That's the problem. But I don't know. Maybe somebody, some people do. It just doesn't interest um, me. I don't know. I think I think it could be done. I mean, just, I mean, look at any like they do celebrity bake offs. They do celebrity loads of things, right? And and what's fun is seeing seeing a celeb you know struggle with regular things or seeing what they really like you know so they it could be it could be cool like you never see celebrities play games and it could be interesting to see what um I'm trying to think of a celebrity you know <laughs> <laughs> what what ryland would be like on max dt for instance <laughs> you know like this is that's the stuff that's interesting you know yeah, so. hopefully dave perry gets back involved you know and really? does like a challenge and freaks out again but he he is definitely free um, so yeah, he, they, that could. Wait, is his happen. YouTube career not taken off yet? I, do you know, I haven't looked. <laughs> I haven't looked recently, but I keep yeah. meaning to. And you just reminded me actually to to have a look because some of those episodes have been amazing. And uh, but you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what I do and, and when we eventually see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the final bit of news we got here is about Destruction All Stars. Uh, which I mean, the reason I placed this here is because I thought we could then go into what you've been playing. Because oh, we love a little segue. Yeah, both both of us have been playing this, but they've so Lucy Games have released a um a hotfix uh, for Destruction All Stars that disables the multiplayer lobby voice communication issue, and the issue was that they seemed to think it was a great idea to release the game in the state whereby any uh, sort of um, any game that you enter, the voice chat was just on by default and. You could hear everybody, and everybody could hear you coming through your dual sense um, uh, speaker, which was very irritating. Absolutely uh, mad that that came out and passed through multiple people. Thinking, yeah, this is this is good, and it's not okay. Things come out of the controller is always a bit weird, and it like freaked me out when I first got my like PS4 and stuff was coming out of the pad. But the fact there was no way to turn it off that, that I could. Think, some people saying, "Oh no, if you if you mute certain people and so on and so forth, you can fix it." But I was like. That is, it's insane, the stuff that I've heard in the last few days. 
I know. I mean, I mostly I've heard. I mean, it's such a cliche, isn't it? But it has been mostly children screaming and stuff, and like, and then people just shouting "shut up" and things yeah. like that as it's been it's going on. Kids it's, screaming you know, and parents shouting. Yeah, is mostly what I've heard. It's, yeah, absolutely crazy. But I mean, they do. Fix I mean, it. I, what, after a while, I obviously just had my headphones in and I just start try to ignore it. Uh, if I if I wasn't playing with headphones, it would have done my absolutely nothing. But um, yeah. yeah, crazy. But okay, so I mean, we could probably talk about this, couldn't we? Because we both, I mean, we both played it over the weekends, like together, yeah, and we've also hammered put, this game. Yeah, we've also put some time in individually. I think. I mean, the trouble is, is this this really isn't my kind of game. <laughs> I'd have to like, what, what immediately that? say that. Exactly. Well, because the thing is, I'm not a huge fan of racing games, like in a big way. I mean, I've I've liked playing a bit of Forza. I like Mario Kart, but in general, I'm not. I mean, this isn't a racing game, but I'm no, not. No, I was going to say, massive, good job. It's not a racing game. Okay, tip. yeah, I'm, but I'm not a massive fan of just cars and car games and that in general. And Battle Royale, I don't really care for that either. So this is kind of like. The setup for this is not me. It's not something that immediately attracts me. But seeing as it was free on PSN, I thought, you know, we would give it a go and see what we think. And I, I mean, I have to say, it does look brilliant. I think it looks great. And I really like the character designs and the driving mechanics are great. But I don't know. What, what did you think, Matt, so far? Yeah, I uh, well, when I saw the, the trailer, when it first got announced in one of the PlayStation shows, I'm like, yeah, like, this looks like Rocket League. I like Rocket League. This looks like a Rocket League. It's 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 more than that. It's well, it's it's not just that. Is what I guess what I'm saying because Rocket League is you know very much like car car football, scoring goals. This has loads of different loads of modes and stuff. But it look it had the same kind of aesthetic, same kind of like neon everywhere, and you know it it was definitely aping that kind of Rocket League look. But I will say I totally agree with you. I think it does look absolutely fantastic, and I, I it just I, I love the style. I love all the oh, there's like sixteen hero characters you can choose from each of which have their own special ability and special cars and, and stuff and i love how diverse the range of characters is uh you know music and sound it all feels really well built really really nice and chunky and it looks looks great um the actual game itself though it, it doesn't really do much for me so there were there were a bunch of different modes but essentially what most of the modes are is that you start on foot and you like jump into this arena you jump into a car and using your car you can smash into other cars every car has like a you know health bar the idea is to wreck other cars basically and there are loads of different modes that link in from that you can smash other cars with like different moves you've got but also other cars can smash into you and then also when your car's smashed up, you'll be running around on foot and other cars can run into you. You can dodge out of the way and grab, jump into another car, rinse and repeat, basically. And in the stuff I've played, it just doesn't really do any... It, it's just not satisfying at all, really. So there's like the main multiplayer mode. Oh, sorry, the, the multiplayer is like the main mode. So there is like an arcade mode, which is like more single player stuff and challenges will come onto that. Um, but multiplayer, there are a bunch of different modes. There's like three modes where you play solo and a couple of modes where you play as a team. And the one I played mostly on my own was just like solo. And so you go in and it's just you versus 15 other cars, 15 other players. And it's just it's just madness. There's like cars going everywhere. You, obviously, there were cars bombing around so fast that you try and aim for one car. They've changed direction or someone's hit them or someone's hit you. And I used to love Destruction Derby back in the day. And it definitely tries to ape that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, but it just wasn't really like satisfying and a bit all over the place. I must say, when I played with you, I enjoyed it way, way more because we played some of the modes, which are team modes, and and there was purpose then to play the game. It's like, okay, we know we've got like smash these cars and you get gears, and that's like a that's like a point thing you've got to collect, and you go to a certain part of the map and you just you um sort of cash them in and help your team. The the modes we played as a team were way, way better, I think. And that that's the thing because the like the main like arcade mode or the main sort of online multiplayer one, like you said, I don't know what the point was. I you know, it really was I felt it was very, very difficult to hit anybody and I just felt like I was getting like, you know, smashed constantly. I mean I also the outside of the car stuff I thought was gonna be a bit more extensive, but it's really not. Like it's only for when you like sort of jump out and then you try and find another car as quickly as possible. You pick up all these crystals and stuff. I'm not entirely sure. Well, I know why because that's so that you can unlock like new costumes and that sort of thing. But no, if you no, don't no, care, no, it's not that at all. Is it not? What's it for then? 
There are two kind of special things that you can do during these battles. One of which you can unlock your your special car. I can't remember what it's called. You have like a special car, and and everyone everyone has their own one. So um, and at some point, once you've collected enough of these crystals and caused and or caused damage, then you unlock your your car, and you're the only one who can get into that. So you basically press the button that appears on the map. You get into that, and that car has more abilities and a special. There's also another ability you can get again, which the more you the the, the more crystals you collect, the faster the bar, the sort of the cooldown bar um, speeds up, so you can get out quicker. And that allows you to do like double jumps when you're on foot, uh, and, uh, and and a couple of other things as well. I think I think Evan Evan has their own special move. Uh, yeah, so when you collect crystals, that helps you earn those things quicker, basically. See that that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> that was the point. <laughs> of that. But uh, yeah, yeah, so okay. I've just read the thing on foot is called a breaker, and and and, and that's the thing. Yeah, you can have um, a double jump and also a speed boost, and then the other one is your is your is your special car, <laughs> mm. uh, and yeah, and and that again has its own abilities and stuff, and it's unique to every character. See, I never I never got a special car, so I don't know if it uh, if it massively improves the experience. But so yeah, I it's mean... called a hero car. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So I was just playing as one character because there's also like challenges in the game it's like you know play this certain character five times and you get xp and so on and so forth uh, so i was just playing as one particular character uh, to get this like pink car um but i, I but yeah and so much of it looks good and feel and 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 should be good but it's just like it doesn't there's no satisfying feeling for me at least in this game it all just felt a bit a bit hollow and it's just but that that's why I think the other mode that we played, so the mode where you have to sort of collect the gears and then you have to like bank them, and that, that did feel like sort of proper strategy there because you'd have to consider how long am I going to hold on here and keep collecting these because if you get smashed or whatever, then you you, lo- you lose the lot and then it's yeah. you know, it's not good for your team or whatever. That was great. I did enjoy that and it was, it was pretty fun. I did find it, because also people can jump on your car as well. I mean, I spent a lot of time shaking people off like during this during <laughs> when we were playing the game. I mean, yeah, you kept I, saying that, yeah. Well, it's true. I mean, I shook off about six or seven people like okay, you know, that's not... during the course of one game. And, okay. uh, but that that is quite satisfying. It was uh, it worked very well. I, I thought sorry. that kind of mechanic. Although I wasn't able to do it myself. You know, I, I found that quite difficult. Yeah, yeah, so someone, when someone's on foot, they can jump into a car, and then they have to like hammer a button, I think, to basically take control of your car, and they can like wreck it, or they can like I guess kick you out. Uh, but if you're driving a car and someone jumps on your roof, then you can shake them it, off. Yeah, you can shake them off, but I, I I can never quite get a hang of 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 it. But whatever. I mean, it feels like there's there's loads of things. There's like double jumps, and there's you know if someone's like you can like uh, jump out, you can be bombing down the, the you know the course or the arena, and you can press like one button to jump out of your car, and your car carries on. You can press another button to jump out of your car, and your car stands still. So I believe there is probably loads of things you can do tactically depending on the situation. So mm-hmm. I'm going to double jump here, I'm going to grab this, I'm going to jump into that car, I'm going to jump out, but do this and jab, grab onto another one. And there are lo- also loads of different cars around the arena on various platforms you can jump into if your car is about to fall to bits. Uh, one thing I do say is that, um, is that it, it, it uses dual sense quite well in that you can really tell just from the vibration if your car is on its last legs and about to blow up. Uh, I, I, think that, I think that's done really well. It kind of vibrates in a different way. You can kind of feel it basically about to fall apart. And at that point, well, yeah, you bomb down. You bomb down the arena. You press a button. You zoom out. And you jump into another car, ready to smash someone else in. That was also the thing that I thought was nice. Just even just going to the menus. Like I, I remember I just started the game up, and I was like, oh, I remember why this pad feels great. And because it was like kind of doing the vibration stuff, but like subtly, and it felt felt really nice. And yeah, it, it does work very well for that. I think. Um, yeah, for the for the driving. Yeah, I played loads uh, of players five this week, and yeah, I, I I still bloody love the pad so much. I mean, it looks cool as hell. I love how it feels. I love how it looks. Yeah, I'm I'm still a huge fan. A uh, huge fan of that pad. Um, yeah, I guess there's two things to talk about this game. One, I I can't believe at one point someone thought this could be like a seventy quid launch <laughs> title. I think that's probably what happened where somebody couldn't believe that, and that's how it became a PSN title. Because <laughs> there isn't an awful lot of modes. There's multiplayer mode, and there's like five different. Well, mod, multiplayer is like the main mode, and of which there are like five different game types. Yeah, there's arcade um, where there's like a series of basically single player games against bots. And then there's challenge series. And currently there are three cha- three like kind of blocks. What would you call them? Three three categories in challenge or three three 
things to do in challenge mode basically yeah. the first one you can unlock is free and 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 basically when you unlock it there's like you play as different characters across different arenas you do different different challenges and i think and i think it ends in like a boss battle of sorts and i think there's the idea to get you involved in the law understand the characters understand their skills and you basically complete this like challenge series doing all these kind of things and you get xp and, and bonuses and skins and stuff um that's cool the first one's free the rest you have to buy you can use the currency you earn in game which is like this pink currency or you can of course spend real world money to buy the next challenge yeah which i think is i mean i get it because it's in it is kind of free it's mostly it's free to play at the moment because it's on ps plus i guess you can call it free to play so they got to make their money somehow i guess but this is i think probably one of the most interesting parts of the game and there's basically one you get one you get for free and the rest you've got to grind out the currency for i don't know how long it takes to get the currency it must be some time because they they were put. I mean, they, but that's the other thing that's interesting because they don't really push like the um the in, in, you know buying currency though, do they? Like it was like I said to you, where how do I do this? Like where where can I find this? Like in the options because it's yeah, I'm desperate to put loads of money into this game. How can I do that, Matt? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I was ready to drop fifty quid. You know, you had to go to like customize or something. And I found the first like, challenge is free, and the rest are like four hundred. Or eight hundred or whatever, and um, yeah, you can buy five hundred of these like of currency for four quid, a thousand for eight quid, and it obviously goes up from there. Um, it's I mean, just I, a shame. I was really disappointed as well that they didn't do that thing that they usually do, you know, where it says things like you know best value or, or like you know most popular <laughs> and stuff like yeah, that, like yeah. on the most expensive one. It yeah, was... the, the sixty four pound one is the most popular. Yeah. I think you should buy twenty thousand DP, yeah. which is yeah. the name of the currency. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be interesting to see where this game goes because this is free on PlayStation Plus for two months. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard much about it. I mean, it, even the reviews didn't like go live on the day the game came out. And I was like kind of searching reviews, and there's like, oh, there's one or two a couple of days later. None of them seem like super positive. It just, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's just me or, or me and you, but like, it, there's just no satisfaction to how the game feels. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. Like, I I I wonder where this is gonna be in like two or two or three months time. Obviously, it's free for two months. I think and it'll I think... be free for longer. I I don't think I I think they'll probably extend this, and so it goes for a much longer time. You know, because I I can't see people spending seventy quid on this. And the, I mean, one of the other things that I think would be really interesting though to try with this is playing like a team game where you've got a bigger group of you like playing together and how that would really shift the dynamics of like what you're doing because we only played the two of us and if there was yeah. a bigger group could that mean like more strategizing and things like that i mean that yeah that could i guess change if, the game if you've got a bunch of mates and there's like five of you and you're hammering this game for a week or whatever you, you might you might love it and you might start to find strategies and tactics and obviously particularly in the the team games oh another thing there's only like five game modes and when, mm-hmm. when you and I played together, there's only like you can only play two as like a team. So there's three yeah. solos, uh, and there's only two as a team. One of which is like I can't, I can't remember what they're called, but there's one where you, you like bank. You, every, every time you hit another player, you get gears, and you can have a maximum of up to eighty on you. And the idea is you go into the center of the map and you cash them in, and most gears at the end wins. And if someone destroys you whilst you're holding those gears, you lose them. So there's like a bit of risk reward, risk reward there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other single player mode where it's that is basically kind of battle royale ish in that there's like 16 cars and the floor eventually starts falling apart. And see, the I idea tried of that one. You knock and players off into the into the pit. See, the problem I had with that one was that it's like you know I started the game, got hit and was instantly dead, and the game was over. And that happened like three times, and I was like, okay, this is probably not the mode for me. Even though <laughs> right, it sounded bad. like a really interesting one, you know, it's because it is you know sort of you know one hit and you're you're kind of gone. But it didn't work for me. Yeah, I think it does so many things right. The way it looks and and you know the sound, it just it looks like a really good quality game. But fundamentally, for me, it's just not satisfying. Yeah, uh, I I haven't heard. Have you heard anyone on your timeline on Twitter start talking about it? Nope, I've heard seen, but then I don't follow hardly any people, so <laughs> that's probably why it's. But so, yeah, I've not I've not I've not heard a, a lot of buzz, you know, about this game. But uh, yeah. 
So that is um, that's destruction all stars. I'm also kind of annoyed actually because it's destruction all stars should be destruction all hyphen stars, right? But they put all stars as one word with a capitalized S. What is that about? Is it capitalized S? Okay. Well, yeah, it's all capital S stars. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter. Um, Let's move (laughs) on to the next game. (laughs) So, I mean, the other the other thing that we've both been playing, I think, is Ball and Wonderworld. And I, uh, is it Wonderworld? I can never remember it is what it's even called. Yeah. It is Wonderworld. So, I mean, I streamed this last week on Xbox because I thought I've got to... I mean, after what David said, I thought I've got to experience this for myself. And, I mean, I don't know where to start with it. I mean, what a mess. It's it's incredible in a sense. I mean, you, you've played it as well. What did you play it on? I played it on a PlayStation. Yeah, PS5. Okay. So maybe we had different experiences because, I mean, or probably didn't. I mean... <laughs> There's just so much about it that I've I've been kind of obsessed with it actually over this week because I keep thinking about it and also the music as well got stuck in my head even though it's the same track over and over and over again but then there's, there's just so much weird stuff in that demo I mean those weird dancing characters that are just sort of like you know dancing around where you go near them and they just disappear I don't know what that's about there's those weird visual effects you know where it's like those sort of bubbles that keep appearing on the screen I don't know what they're for and there's also that yeah, strange yeah, but, but, but before we go into all the weird stuff like how like describe the game for those who weren't here last week well okay I mean this is it feels like a sort of a cross between like sort of Knights and Sonic Adventure, really. I think I would say. What do you think? Because I, I and, don't really and know. Mario Odyssey. Uh, I think they'd like it to be like that, but yeah, I, I don't think they. It's a it's a three D character based platform, ha- isn't it? I don't think they've ever played Mario Odyssey because if they had, then they wouldn't release this because it's. It's dreadful. It's it's really really terrible, and it feels. I mean, I was listening to Play One podcast, and they were talking about this, and it, it's it's absolutely true. It feels like the developers have not played a three D platformer in the last twenty years, um, because it feels yeah. like something from yeah you know, from a massive throwback. I got that. I it felt like it was designed in a vacuum, and they're like, "Hey, the game we've been working on for like since two thousand two, or you know, probably a lot earlier, it's out. We haven't left the studio. We've made it. Here we go." Like, what do you mean no one's playing these games anymore? Uh, it really does feel exactly like it was it was meant to come out 20 or 30 years ago. and just didn't. It's just so many sort of strange design choices. That's what I find interesting about it. And just... There's that okay, no, sort of... Let's go through them. Yeah, so the, uh, there's loads of dancing characters. <laughs> For no apparent uh, reason. But yeah, yeah. It, that's just not really explained. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, there's music happening. So dancing time with music. Okay, cool, I guess. But I don't quite know... Why? I was like, is this? Are they under a spell? Is that part of the narrative? No. Why do they disappear? Dancing. Yeah. The weird, the weird, the weird thing for me is, is that visual effect, as you mentioned, is like these circles keep appearing. And I'm like, hey, this is like nights in dreams where I'm supposed to like double jump in the air and like fly through them. But no, they. Uh, the amount of times that I died because I thought, okay, there's one there. I think I can get through that circle. <laughs> I just jumped off a cliff into nothingness. I thought. Surely that's a thing, but that's just a visual effect. I don't. Maybe that's explained later. I don't know. I the, think it's just a visual the sa- effect. The sound yeah. to collect the gems feels like exactly from Knights. I mean, I haven't heard side by side comparison, but I'm like, wow, that that is such a Knights feel when you, when you're collecting those those uh you know the, the gems, whatever it is. See, I wouldn't know. I mean, I've never played Knights. It's uh, yeah, I've never missing played out, it. So I, missing out. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's dreadful though. Really? I I mean, Matt, I, what is good about it? Explain well, no, no, what no, is I good. I didn't say it's good, but I, I, it, it's just it just feels like a totally harmless 3D character, 3D platformer. That yeah, that, that there's it's you can't compare this in any way, shape, or form to a proper in invert commas proper 3D platformer like Mario Odyssey or any Why not? Pro- fucking Mario sixty four. You can't compare it. Why not? But, because, well, because it is like night and day. Um, well, exactly, but then this, there's no... I don't know why this exists. Like, I really don't know why it exists. No, no, I, I, I fully get that, yeah. I also don't know why it, uh, why it exists. But, I mean, I'm not like, this is the worst game ever. I've played way worse games than this. It's nothing like that. It's just well, like, no, you've it's been totally doing harmless. That, you've been doing those, um, you know, the gamer score stuff, haven't you? I mean, I think it's dulled your senses. Yeah, but th- this doesn't offend me. It's just, it's fascinating to play and see it. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Okay. I'm I'm not offended by this. I'm fascinated by this because I'd love to know how this came about, like and how they released this and thought this is a good demo. Yeah, this is something that we should put out. People are going to love this, and they're definitely going to pre-order it. 
That's that's what I find fascinating. Like the idea that you've got these developers who have got. I mean, David talked about it last week. You know, you think about Yuji Naka now, and you think, okay, what what's the you know what has he you know done over the last sort of you know twenty or thirty years or whatever? Been working on it's this. Still, well, exactly. But you're still just thinking, how how did this happen? Like, how did this happen? Like, I mean, I just find it fascinating. I mean, the other thing I found out this week that I didn't know was that the demo that we've played where did you get up to matt did you did you do the bit with the um the farmer like did you get past that bit uh yeah 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 so i i thought i completed it and then when i got sent back into like the field they're like levels uh four and six open up as well and i've been in six a little bit haven't bothered with four um so yes yeah, so i did all of one and then you see that farm in the field and like the weird dancing routine <laughs> bit uh and yeah i did all that and like you know the boss and stuff at level level and yeah and then there were more um for sure did, did you not do levels four and six no because when i when i played it on stream it did that and it kind of ran sort of credits almost and i just thought okay well that must be it that's the end of the demo it doesn't explain at any point that this is you know there's more you know to this and because you only get those extra levels if you start getting more of the trophies and stuff like through the levels that's how you i mean you must have got more than i did because i didn't um, get enough I didn't for get them to all unlock cuz i didn't get all 8 of them because there's like eight little trophies you can get in mm-hmm. each of the levels i didn't get all eight um but i don't, I don't know think you just need like more, once, yeah. I, once i finished it i went for that credits tile sequence yeah it's like what back got sent back inside the hub world and there's levels 4 and 6 for me to play for free which i thought was brilliant great value for money for free demo <laughs> Um, See, the, this is why I downloaded the Switch version because when I heard this, I thought I've got to play more of this, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna gonna download the Switch one, see what that's like. I mean, the performance on that is even is awful. Like it's it's much worse than the um than what's called the the PlayStation and Xbox version. It's it's really. Sorry, would you yeah. would you say the performance is bad on them? Yes. Oh, what you think? I wouldn't say it was good. Um, I don't. I didn't have an issue with performance. I mean, it looked very basic. It, it, but I wouldn't like. It wasn't like hanging. Matt, it wasn't like got, getting loads of frame drops and. Matt, it's got like grass that appears. It's got oh, yeah, you know, no, like, no yeah. draw distance. <laughs> yeah, and I stuff. mean, it's got that stuff. In fact, you, you know the level where um, it looks like oh, the hot. It's kind of like Inception, where the whole level feels like it's kind of <laughs> rotating on itself. Yeah, and it's just like, like Inception. Yeah, yeah, just like it. <laughs> just like it. Um, like on that level, I was like. Are these graphics supposed to be like this, or because it's kind of um, checkerboarding in some ways? Yeah. It's, okay. Okay. I will admit it's kind of like a bit jiggity jaggedy on that level. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, especially admit... because you've also got that massive disconnect between the cutscenes, which look pretty good, and the gameplay, which is like wow. Like this is <laughs> this is it's like a huge massive change. It's incredible. Are you going to waste your money on um, the new Mario game out this week, or not bother now? Um, may not bother. I mean, no, what's the point? Don't waste your money. What's the, what's now, the point? Now we played this. There's no uh, need. James, you have to stream this game. No, I don't think I can. Because yes. this is what happened. This is what happened with the Switch one. Because I downloaded the demo and I thought, okay, I'm going to play this so I can play the other levels that I haven't played yet that I've only just become aware of. And I started playing the first level again. And I just thought, I can't do this. I can't sit here and listen to this music, look at these characters, these horrible character designs, and you know, push my way through this. I thought, I'm not doing that, and I deleted it. I just thought, I can't, I can't do it. It's not happening. Well, you should, I don't think you I can play the full it. game of this. I don't I, think I, I can do it. I know I've just said to you, you know, it's not that bad, blah, 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 but it, but it, it's, it's not good. Like, you, know, you know that bit in like the, first, the first part of the first level where there's like there's spider webs, and you're yeah. like, oh, there's some gems up there. I'll try and get them. But there's like no explanation about how I can do that. And like one of the abilities you get, which is definitely they're trying to like riff off the whole Mario Odyssey changing, you know, Cappy and stuff where yeah. you get you... There's these little um oh god, actually no, there's loads of shit for stuff stuff about this. You, there's like um to change outfit and, and there's like multiple different outfits you can switch to them on the fly once you've collected a bunch, and there's like a rabbit which jumps high, and there's another one which has a kind of a hover move, and there's there's like three or four outfits at least in, in this demo. And but to get them, there's like a you see like a little shining diamond, which you see like oh there's an outfit in that. Uh, but you can't open that first, you've got to get a key. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, this could be interesting. I've got to go on level, find a key, then get that gem. But the the gem and the key are literally next to each other. Mm-hmm. So what's the point? <laughs> like that also, it, yeah, that also like, made what, no sense. Yeah, like if you're gonna say, oh, you can't access that new costume until you found the key, then hide it somewhere. Don't yeah. put it <laughs> where I can see both of them together. There's literally <laughs> there's literally no point doing that. 
Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that make no sense in this game, and that's, I mean, that that is a very good observation of something which is which is terrible. I mean, obviously, you're supposed to go back to these places after you've got new costumes and stuff, and like, you know, you can explore other areas, but then that means you've got to listen to that music again, you know, Matt. Before we, I've, I've got some breaking news for you. Oh shit! Um, which has okay. just happened. I've still got more Battle of Wonderworld things to say, but yeah, kind of, this here's breaking news. I'm excited. I mean, it involves Anthem as well. Oh my god, you're joking! I'm not joking. Oh yeah. my god. Here, are you are you taking a piss? I'm not taking a piss. No, it's um, Jason Schreier. I've just I've just seen up on my on my Twitter feed as oh uh, just just appeared. So it says for the last year and a half, Bioware has been in incubation mode, overhauling the maligned online game Anthem. This week, EA will review the progress of Anthem next and decide whether to expand the team or put an end to the project. Oh, what? So, so it's, it's all, we're all this time next week we should know the fate of Anthem, which is pretty exciting. Oh my god! I can't. Believe, I thought, um, it's not going to happen, is it? It's definitely not going to happen. It's <laughs> oh man, it's not going to happen. What you think they're going to? You think they will kill it? Yeah, I think they. Oh man, <laughs> I thought okay, just. Spend a year, or what? How how long have they been on it? I mean, I'm, I can probably read that piece and find out. But it's been about a year. Yeah. Oh my god, they're gonna kill it! And like, it, so James, how are you gonna feel in a space of a fortnight? You know, <laughs> but your two loves, Anthem and Stadia, both dead. A little bit sad, to be honest. I yeah, mean, like, what been... else have you got going on in your life now? Hey, uh, that's the problem. I mean, I don't know where I go next. I mean, there's I no feel no Stadia update. There's no Anthem update. We need yeah. to find a new game where you can say uh, update. Well, we've got Bad and Wonderworld. I mean, Bad and Wonderworld that's, update. Yeah, this is the yeah. That's that is the new oh, hotness for man. me. Oh man, they're gonna. I, I mean, obviously, this is like you know a, a scoop, and these boy talk to sources and stuff. But yeah. oh god, they're gonna kill it. They're gonna kill. I really. They I, might not. They might not. They might expand the team, and it might become everything we always thought or hoped it would be. If it gets to a point where you're like we've got to make a decision, that to me doesn't say well. It's looking amazing so far. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt, I'm actually quite going about that. I really hope they they keep it going. So you really think that it means they're finishing it? Because I don't know. Maybe 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 they really are going to give it a chance, and you know, maybe they'll look at it and be like, "Wow, this is this is great. You've done great work, and uh, I think we should continue with this." Before you start reading out, I thought you were going to say that they're they're announcing it next week. They're like hit the big relaunch is happening next week. Not they're going to probably kill it next week. No, it's uh, oh, it's, uh, oh yeah. Uh, good. My 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 guess is that it's going to be a new. It's going to be a. <laughs> oh, oh man! But at least at least at least we'll know for sure though, because you know this. Otherwise, this probably would have gone on and on and on, and then they never would have said anything. Yeah, it's, it's the hope that kills you, I guess. But uh, yeah. Oh well, that's a uh, that's a blow. Anyway, on to happier things. Battle and Wonderworld. Yeah, fascinating game. I I I I. I it's mad that it's out. It doesn't bring. It doesn't add anything to gaming that I've seen doesn't bring anything new to the table it's a fascinating experiment um, no it's not <laughs> how, is it, how is it a fascinating experiment well you it's said just, yourself you're fascinated by it I'm fascinated by it but I don't think it was intended as an experiment I think <laughs> I think it was intended to be something, you know, that was going to hit all the nostalgia, no, James, you know, for no nights way and stuff like this that. could have intended to be anything. Look at it. If they, if no, someone but... intended this to be something, then they have majorly <laughs> failed. Well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Because if you nothing. remember the, those first trailers when they came out, everyone was getting really excited. They were like, "Look, it's like nights. It's like nights all over and again." I said that. Well, okay, but other people said that as well, and it's not obviously. It's it's um yeah. So when is when is this game out anyway? I'm sure you've probably pre-ordered multiple copies on multiple platforms already, knowing you. But when's it out? Uh, definitely, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna download it on everything. Uh, it's a, I think it's is it 28th of March, which is about a month away. I mean, so they've still got time, you know, to turn this into something well, amazing. Away. Yeah, they've got, and, they've got uh, two months to fix it. That's that's cool. We, yeah, we didn't talk about like, sure the um, the hub world, which is kind of like the the Ko Garden. It's like you you have those, uh, those little creatures. Called like Tim's or something? Are they? T- I think they're Tim's. It, it's, it's, Tim, it's, it's the it's, Tim's Tower. Tim's yeah, which Tower. I Tim don't Garden. The point and of like that. every time you cl- the things you collect in like the levels, which like the the gems, and diamonds, or whatever. When you go back to the Tim Garden or Tim Tower, um, you have these little like creep the little Tims that follow you. Um, you like dish out your gems and they grow or they eat them. I think they're growing. It's hard to say, but 
they're based like little chaos, like little yeah, little chaos things, aren't they? What, what, would you are they chows or? I don't know. I've I've never known actually how you're supposed to pronounce it. I think I said chows <laughs> last garden. week, but it's probably wrong or chaos. I don't know. Somebody will because correct it's us. like chaos emeralds from Sonic, so I assume it's just K. Yeah, oh, that's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, I'm not going to buy it, obviously, but it's uh, but what a game. What a demo. I implore everyone listening to this who haven't yeah. already downloaded the demo to download the demo today and give it a go because it's I mean, real something. If you're thinking if you're thinking equivalence, it reminds me a bit of uh, of Mighty Number no. 9 in the sense of like, you know, this is something they're trying to like, you know, do something in a similar style but not quite reaching that and that's very similar with this, I think. It's uh, it's not great. Yeah, it's uh it's it's real it's, it's a real piece of work. It certainly is. Uh, what, what else have you been playing? Uh, the other thing I played is the medium. Oh, finally. You finally got around to that, have you? I did, yeah. And I think I'm near the end as well. I've, I've got quite a lot further into it. And it is it is an enjoyable game. It's, um, it's good and it's a pretty good experience. But I do feel like the premise for it is kind of wasted because part of what the character does in the game is that you're supposed to be helping people cross over like to the other side. And you do this quite frequently in, in earlier parts of the story and it's quite good because what the way it works is that you like meet a character who's sort of trapped and then you have to sort of work out their backstory and then also find out their name so you can like name them and then you release them and this is quite interesting because there are some quite good stories you know some quite good sort of um you know puzzles that are, re- are related to that but then it's a shame because then it feels it then shifts almost entirely the story just to talking about your character and about you know the reason why they're in this um uh this uh place where you know that yeah. I talked about last week uh Niwu it's called it's the uh yeah the uh, like workers. the hellscape type area no the yeah it's it's there but it's also the um you know this uh oh, this holiday resort that's been abandoned and oh, it's like right, you know why okay. you've been drawn there and that kind of thing so that's but I'm not finding that as interesting as some of these other stories that are being told you know that are related okay. to that which is a bit of a shame mostly but, and that that's what feels like a waste with this I feel like I'm coming towards the end it feels like it's a very short game it's only probably about six or seven hours long and I just wish that they kind of filled it out with more of these other sort of other stories really um because I think they're more interesting um but it's still fun it's still it's still pretty good so I've never played Silent Hill because obviously I don't not into horror games but it, how Silent Hill is it I hear a lot of people saying oh it's quite Silent Hill ish uh I, it's similar like the monster design and all that kind of thing is i think they were trying to ape that sort of style of, of of silent hill but it doesn't it doesn't feel as menacing um as silent hill at all like the atmosphere is not as on point as that as those games always were which is i think a bit of a shame but um it's still is this game full of jump scares i hear it's only got like two or three of them uh, I've not really experienced any, okay. uh, honestly. Most of the, mo- I mean, most of the sort of the fear I think from this is supposed to be come from the sort of the, the the sort of the dread of like the other world and like what that symbolises and what that means to the different characters. But that hasn't really particularly bothered me uh, that much. I mean, it was certainly better than uh, Little Hope, um, but um, which I've also finished this week um, on the stream. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask about Little Hope. I was say, is that it for the medium? I was going to ask, uh, was it? Does it look good? I mean, you're playing on an S, so uh... the medium does. Yeah, it's uh, in places it looks good, in other places not so good. Which I know makes no sense whatsoever. But there are some parts where I think that looks excellent, but then yeah, yeah other parts, yeah, particularly character design, I don't think is is very strong with the game. But um, which is a shame. But again, still better than Little Hope, which was uh, yeah. But but you finished Little Hope. I did, and it. I think Man of Badan is probably the better <laughs> than Little really? Hope, which is yes, I, I really do think it probably is. Um, I think the story in Man of Badan is a lot more interesting. Uh, the problem with Little Hope is it it does go for like sort of like twist ending kind of stuff, and it I don't think it really works. It's not not really it's it it works, but it's the payoff is not worth it, you know, for you know, for what you get from it, which is a shame. But uh, I'm glad it's over. So th- th- there were there's gonna be a bunch of these. Obviously, we've had Man of Medan. Yeah. We've had uh, Little Hope. Um, there was one before Man of Medan, wasn't there? No, this this is the second one. Oh, Man of Medan was the first one. Okay, this it was. So it. are you interested in the next one? Yeah, I mean, I will play it only because I feel like I'm invested in this now, and I'd like to see if they can make things better. I mean, there's a trailer at the end of it uh, for another you know for another game uh, in the series, which. Looks like it could be interesting, maybe. Uh, but I guess we have to wait and see. But aren't these getting progressively worse now? Yeah, but <laughs> you never know. The, the next one might pull it out of the bag and might be amazing. It, are it are they be... in a shared universe? Is there any need yeah. to have played one? Oh, of course are. there is, yeah. I mean, there's even parts in it where you have like these premonitions where you see things from future games as well. Like, I mean, which is a cool idea. you know. It's But whether they all get made or not, I think is 
looking increasingly unlikely, I think, at this stage. I think we may get at least one more. Um, and maybe they'll wrap it up with that or something. But um, I, see, I love the premise. The premise is very good. Like this idea of these sort of, you know, sort of short stories, you know, in the shared universe, uh, sort of, you know, with this sort of, there's this curator who is like linking everything together. I love it. I think it's a brilliant idea. It's just the execution is so poor. Like the dialogue is bad. Um, what's it called? The, you know, the characters are completely forgettable and not interesting at all. It's it's completely the opposite of um, what was so great about Until Dawn, which nailed everything, you know, in, in that regard. And I just think it's strange that they, they, you know, failed so badly with this, in my opinion. Yeah, because everyone loved Until Dawn. Yeah. And then it's... So it so it's just... So what Until Dawn did so well is, like, you feel like the characters and the, the shocks, and it's just like it went along a nice pace, and it feels yeah. like now they're not really delivering on those things at all. Yeah, none of those. I and mean, the pacing in this is dreadful. I mean, one of the streams I did, pretty much nothing happened for, like, an, about an hour and a half. It was really, really boring. And I'm sorry to anyone who was watching that, because it, it can't have been, like, terribly entertaining, because, yeah... Nothing happened, which was a shame. But what, what do you think? Do you think it was a benefit having Will Poulter in as like the main, the main protagonist, or is that not a, a thing? I don't think it really matters. <laughs> to be honest, no. it did, certainly didn't save it in any sort of way, which was a shame. But yeah, oh shame. So, I mean, I yeah, I didn't play. Um, I mean, play Man of a Damn View, and it was I thought it was pretty dreadful. But I, I had no interest in these, and I think like the more I hear about you playing them, it just doesn't seem like it's even. I, I I can't. I could see a trailer for the next one, but I'm not like. Yes, I think this is the one that turns it around. Uh, I just can't see that. Yeah, one. I mean the trailer they had at the end didn't look like it was going to. I mean there was a nice sort of Exorcist linking sort of stuff in the last one, so that maybe has some potential. But I don't know. We'll see. Okay, cool. Um, is that it this week? Yeah, that's all I've had. So what what have you got? You've got. You've been playing Spider Man, haven't you? I have. Yeah, I'm playing Spider Man. I um, I saw you on well, the thing. This is the. Uh, <laughs> So I I actually managed to play on my PlayStation this week and it's been good. I've had a bit more time uh, to do things and have I'm 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 in a better place mentally to like I'll sit down and play a game and I played obviously with uh, you and played Destruction All Stars and I'm like and I'm like you know I should just play bloody Spider Man I'm here now and you definitely should yeah um, I played it and I finished it already. Um, I basically, oh really? You got yeah. you ran through it yeah? That's, yeah. yeah I, that's so I, so prior to like this so I played it basically Saturday night. But well, did we need to play Saturday night? Was that Saturday we played for a bit? Yeah, we played Saturday yeah. night, yeah. So after we knew played Destruction All Stars, I played this on Saturday night. I played it a little bit on Sunday morning. I played Sunday night. Um, and I played just before the pod tonight and managed to get it finished. I had played like maybe an hour, maybe mm-hmm. maybe half an hour before like, you know, when it, when it first came out. Um, yeah, and I, I absolutely hammered it. I didn't want to stop playing it. And uh, I, you know, surprise, surprise, I think it's fucking excellent. Um, hang on, hang on. You you must have just mainlined it though, right? Like you didn't do all the side mission stuff and everything. Um, I did four out of seven side missions. Um, mm-hmm. I did a bunch of I did loads of other stuff, um, but I didn't think I was mainlining it at all, really. But um, I just, oh, okay, I got. I mean, it still took me twelve hours. It's like mm-hmm. same amount of time you had on on, yeah, on PlayStation. That's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's no surprise. Yeah, it's it's absolutely excellent. If you know, I loved the 28, 2018, yeah, twenty eighteen Spider Man. Um, this does. Loads of things, mostly better, some not so good. Uh, the better is, you know, Miles is an amazing character, way more interesting than Peter Parker in every every way, shape, and form, really. Mm-hmm. Um, him and the characters around him uh, and, like, his family and friends and stuff, I think more interesting, uh, I think, yeah, and I, I, I just think it's just a much better vibe. And, yeah, he's just an awesome, awesome character. Mm-hmm. Um I think I think the side mission is definitely more interesting. That they're not just go there, punch those people and walk out. I feel like the ones I've done, they all seem like kind of different, and I like that. Um, I like the fact it kind of harks back to the 2018 game. There's like some things you do which oh which you which you did in that 2018 game, but it kind of like spins on it and a nice sort of twist and stuff. I think that's really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the story is I think the story is really good. But I think it's definitely kind of lacking. I think the villain isn't as nowhere, nowhere as good as, as the 2018 one. No, I, I'd agree with that. I, yeah, it, it was lacking. I, in that which is weird, cause I, I think I think the story behind it is interesting. Um, it's not just like standard villain stuff, but also it's not. There's not like a real kind of. There's not a real presence of you versus the villain. It's just kind of, kind of yeah. It doesn't really kind of doesn't really get there 
uh, doesn't really hit what it needs to hit. But I, I, I still think the story is is really really good and and you know is is compelling uh, through to the end. I'll tell you what this really misses is the relationship between you you had with that cop. Uh, what, what 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 was her name in the twenty eighteen one? Oh, was that Yuri? Yeah, Yuri. Yeah, and Yuri is yeah. excellent in twenty eight mm-hmm. in twenty eighteen Spider Man. And there isn't really an equivalent in this where in twenty in twenty eighteen Spider Man, like Yuri was the cop who you were speaking to over kind of, you know, just speaking to her as you were like flying through the for line through the city and there's a bit of a back and forth there, really great relationship. That isn't really there. Obviously there are other kind of major characters not in this that were in that twenty eighteen one. Um but I but I there's a couple of really, really nice nods to that one. Um Particularly, I'm not gonna say much for spoilers, but where you, um, no, I don't remember. Emotion, but there's a, there's a bit right at the end. I'm sure you must know it where you're in that place, mm-hmm. um, and then you see someone else. I was like, oh, okay, I like that. Does that ring a bell? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, no, no, I don't okay. remember what you mean, but yeah, we'll talk about it after the show. Yeah, I mean, uh, I will say another, another thing. Uh, another game with a really great museum in it. Okay, so we had Last of Us with the museum. Yeah, and now we've got this one as well. It's oh, like they yes. must have been. Yeah, when um when this game well when this game was being worked on, the last one came out first. They're like, oh mm-hmm. my god, another one of the museum. Like, this is like this is way more in depth. This is there's loads of like you know things to see in the museum. But yeah, like yet another one. Uh, in fact, even like the location kind of reminded me of like Last of Us, where it's kind of this you know thing by the water, and yeah, it's mm-hmm. funny how these things kind of you know seem incredibly similar after you played it, but. Yeah, I thought story was excellent. Um, I about halfway through, and that game, you know, it took me like twelve hours to get through. About halfway through, I was thinking, I don't know if I'm really feeling this as much. Mm-hmm. It feels very samey compared to the old one. Um, and in in the, the last the last act, it, it really picked up. And I think I think actually kind of the same thing happened with the previous game in that it was good and it gradually got better and better but it was a bit i'm like oh, it's you know it, the it's the combat's kind of samey i think when you start to get more and more of the abilities it just gets better and better and better and maybe was, there's a bit of a lull there in the story for me around two thirds of the way through mm-hmm. and, and also I, I i was also thinking what are they gonna do for the next one well this this is this is what i was just thinking because i think one of the things which i've liked less i think about about this I mean, overall, I, as I said when I when I talked about it before, I did really love it. But the the enemies that you fight, there is that sort of sameness, isn't there, to them? Like mm-hmm. in the sense that it's it's either people with guns or it's people with like these like super you know souped up guns and everything. It would be nice to fight something a bit different, like in in something di- you know, in a new yeah. release. But one thing that it this does way better than the previous one is that Miles's abilities are brilliant. It's got like basically he can have. A lot of electricity from his. I can't remember what, what's it called. I should know. I've been having it in the last like couple of days, but you know, the, the, you have that that power, the venom power. You got the venom, venom power, yeah, yeah. And basically, you can do there's loads of moves you can do with your venom power, which requires you to not just you know press the standard face buttons, but do a combination of them, and then you have super power punches and jump in the air and smash and stuff. And all them abilities are really really cool, and I use them way more, and they're way more interesting to do these like venom. You know, you can there's you can, there's awesome things where you can basically pull up loads of enemies from the ground and like they can like and all the electricity like links links between them and you can do like combos in the air I thought that was excellent so his abilities are way more interesting as well compared to peter parker's mm-hmm. but i was also thinking like you know the city like it, it looks absolutely stunning obviously it looks great on playstation 5 i was playing in like new the new um mode which has both ray tracing and 60 frames it's obviously kind of ray tracing dialed down a bit and like the mm-hmm. um the amount of pedestrians is dialed down a bit so actually after a while i just went back to straight 60 mm-hmm. um which you know it's i think it's oh, much yeah. better because you... new york feels busy and it just seems to make much more sense but did you prefer it in that mode then like in 60 over, uh, uh, over yeah, the yeah, visual yeah 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 I, I i play most of 60 apart from the bit where i i play like you know f- three hours or so so but maybe yeah i've brought out a quarter of the game i tried that different mode um but it just felt a bit too empty so i just went back to straight 60 um yeah, I mean, and like the one on sixty, there's kind of there's like the kind of the fake, you know, ray traced reflections and stuff, and it was mm-hmm. fine. I mean, yes, it could look a lot nicer, but I didn't think the compromise of having them both, but barely any like pedestrians. I think I looked a bit poor, and mm-hmm. uh, I think sixty frames bobbing through the city just feels amazing. Um, yeah, swinging just still feels absolutely class, and it's uh, I don't think I would ever not get satisfying and not get fun to 
you know, to, to fly through the city at breakneck speed. But speaking of city, like, so we have one 2018, amazing game. This one, also a fantastic game. There will be another one, of course, and he'll, he'll still be in New York because that's where Spider-Man is. Yeah. But I don't know, like, I kind of think in a third game, I get a little bit bored. It's like the same location. I get it has to be because it's Spider-Man, but... But couldn't they, they could expand it out, couldn't they? Like, not just off... Yeah, you know, the island that's there, they could maybe go elsewhere as well. Yeah, I do want to do something because as much as it looks amazing, and and, and it looks so good there because in this game because they've you know they do loads of stuff with snow and weather and it just looks amazing on the PlayStation Five. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. I'm thinking a third one, same city again. They might it might wane. I don't know. Don't know. Um, but I'm so glad I played it. Yeah, I uh, it's it's just it's just bloody brilliant. So I'm yeah, I put loads of time into that, and it, I've, it's been good. We get back on the PlayStation, and uh, as I was saying earlier, I still love the pad. The OS, I'm still not jazzed about. It's fine. It obviously does the job. What, what do you fl- not like about it though? What's the, the issue? Well, with it? like it just feels like it takes a bit longer to do things. It's it's not it, it, the previous OS for PlayStation 4 is obviously incredibly simple and I like that. It's just left and right really. You know if you go up, you're doing certain things, you know if you know settings and party mm-hmm. stuff. You know if you press down, you go into like game specific content. And I don't know. I do, it, it's not it doesn't feel as instant. It's probably because I haven't obviously put anywhere near the amount of hours into it. I probably should have done and obviously nothing compared to the PS4, but I don't know. I s- I'm, I'm getting used to just pressing, just pressing the PlayStation button once instead of holding it down. That still makes no sense. I really yeah, wish but I'm getting used to that. Now. You know, press it once, <laughs> and like to say, turn it off. You press left, and it goes back to power. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just feels a. It, it, it it's definitely more style over function, whereas the other one was pure function. It felt like to me. This looks nicer, but not quite as quick to do things. I don't think. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I'm, I've, uh, but I'm really glad I've played it. But I was thinking, you know, I've played uh, Astrobot, a uh, great game. Yeah. Played this now. Um, I've got Sackboy, yeah, which which I will play. Uh, but I'm like, well, what is there? What's after that? Bug snacks. Bug snacks. Mm, yeah, it is downloaded, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, there's there's not much coming, is there? That which is a problem. Yeah, there is a big problem with that. Yeah. Uh, and, but yeah, but anyway, um, f- forgetting what's going to happen in the future or not, I'm so glad to play Spider Man. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. loved it. And that's all I've been playing. I mean, it's been a busy week, of course, but yeah, it's mostly been a PlayStation 5 week this week. Okay, so, should we get on to some questions then? Yeah, I'll do the questions if you want. Go ahead. Uh, if you want to leave a question or anything, go to tcgs.co slash dear tcgs. Uh, Lindy Bailey starts us off, as it's just you two tonight, what other iconic duo would you compare yourselves to? I do not know. And Deck? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a, not a huge fan. You're not a huge fan of Anne Deck? Just... Not, not really, no. What, 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 what's, what's wrong with you? What, what have they done? They're like the least offensive pair on tier television, aren't they? Yeah, it's, I don't know. Just Biker Grove, isn't it? I was never into that, but weren't you a PJ Duncan fan? Well, no. <laughs> oh, I love PJ Duncan. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had like Psych, which I think it must have been one of the debut record, maybe. Had that, that was video. The, watch us wreck the mic. Watch us yeah, wreck Psych, the mic yeah. stuff here. Yeah. I had yeah. that. I had like the Psych video, and it was. It, I think basically in those days, or in these days, it was a vlog basically on, on mm-hmm. VHS. And me and my sister used to watch that loads. Of of them, you know, like basically, I one of the one of the big moments in the psych video is that they are in between gigs. They're in Barcelona, and and or Deck asks for ketchup or something with his steak, and it's like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that. It's, it's sounds, uh, it's sounds great, amazing. It's a great yeah. video, actually. Yeah, um, it's a shame it's not on Blu-ray, actually, but it's a great video. Um, who would you compare ourselves to? I was going to say, right, said Fred, and I realize you haven't, you've got more hair than that, so. Yeah, uh, just about still, but not quite. It's uh, yeah, it's it's all going. This is why I hate it when Dave posts those pictures. Uh, oh yeah, it, it makes me sick. Oh, I need another haircut. He's a, he's, a, he's like, look at look at this mess, and it's like, yeah, you've got hair. C- hey, look at that mess. Look at this yeah. mess. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Look at his hair's going in my eyes. Oh, I'm so sorry that the hairdressers are shut. Yeah, it must must, must be, be awful sick. to have all that hair. You know, it must be must be 
real yeah, problem. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely with... sick. Yeah. David Hodgkins, um, question for the interfaces. Which other tech podcasters or YouTubers could you take in a pub car park at 2 a.m.? Mr. Linus Tech Tips, Dave 2D? Pretty much any of them. I reckon I could take Linus. He does... <laughs> he's, yeah, he, he's, he's, not, he's not the biggest guy, but he also seems like he's probably quite quite ripped. I mean, I, I'm not in like size, but just like, you know, probably pack, probably pack a mean punch. Yeah. Do you watch Linus Tech Tips? I, I've seen, yeah, sometimes I've, I've seen a couple of his videos, yeah. Yeah, he's great. Big fan. Uh, no, I've, 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 I've never seen Dave 2D. No, me neither. Nostalgia nerd? Have you, have you ever seen his stuff? No. No? <laughs> that sounded very dismissive. What's wrong with that? <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, a nostalgia. I'm just, oh, is, that, is that old? What is that? Old tech shit? Uh, not just. It's also video game stuff and things like that. It's, uh, right. yeah. Nah. I mean, you, you, you must know, like, lazy game reviews as well. Nah. I can't believe you. Okay. Maybe it's just because I've, I've got a different algorithm to you. Yeah, but, probably. Uh... <laughs> My algorithm is very different to you. <laughs> very, very different. It's, it's a pretty superior algorithm, actually, if anything. Almost certainly. I mean, my stuff's all old stuff, like really old. So <laughs> yeah, it's all like right. it's all chip tunes and all like you know Mortal Kombat soundtracks and yeah. stuff. I'm just. I'll tell you one feel again. tech tech YouTuber I wouldn't be able to tackle, and that's MKBHD. He's like about nine is. foot tall, and he's like a professional frisbee player, so he could probably destroy me in a in a pub car park. Okay. I don't know who that is. So I have what MKBHD Marcus Brownlee. No idea. Surely you know Marcus Brownlee. No. He's he's like the biggest tech YouTuber on on the. Not yeah. not in my algorithm. He's not. Wow. So I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah. I'm shocked. Um, okay, uh, Jacob Biscuitweather has messaged us. Hello, gentlemen. Two questions for you today. One, do you use a knife or a spoon to eat cheesy puffs slash Cheetos while gaming? And two, do you generally eat while playing video games? See, I don't. I, I mean, it's probably one of the times when I don't eat is when <laughs> I'm playing video games. Most of the rest of the time, I might probably am. But no, when I'm playing games, I don't because I, I have that thing about the pad. Like, I don't want it to get all greasy and oily and everything, so I don't generally eat stuff with, um, with it. I, yeah, I mean, typically not. I just have a beer, which, which is that's dangerous if I'm playing games every night. Um, but no, I, definitely not crisps. Definitely not crisps. That's no, because the oil, I mean, maybe, maybe some Skittles, because mm-hmm. they're, they're pretty harmless, aren't they? Yeah, you could, you could down like a, one of those, like a whole tube of those pretty easily. It wouldn't be difficult. Well, I wasn't going to do that. I'm not a monster. But, um, uh, no, and I mean, but if I were to eat Cheesy Puffs and Cheetos, I guess a spoon would be a good way to do it. Nah, I'd, I'd just get a f- put your fist in it, innit? Just... No, because then, the, then you've got the greasy pad. That's what the no, spoon's you, there for. Yeah, but then you could have some wet wipes next to you. It's fine. That sounds like a lot of work in between <laughs> in between games of Destruction All Stars. Mm, not going to do that. Okay, um, Mr. D- uh, sorry, MD Krubuffs, Um With the tough lads away, I mean, is he, is he carrying would... Sean in that? Sean is a tough lad. <laughs> okay. And Dave? Is he carrying Dave? Yeah, I don't... Is he? You get mixed up. It, it, anyway, it's a chance for the more sensitive side of the TCGS team to be able to speak without the fear of interruption. So, what's your best cake? I've got um, a lot of questions here. What, like, so we're not the tough lads, and we're more sensitive. Uh, probably. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say. I mean, Sean. Again, I'm sorry, Sean. Sorry. I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Yeah, cast aspersions, but yeah. Um, we're we're probably better looking as well, actually. Thinking about it, <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah, I think it, I think it checks out. Uh, best cake, James. Uh, maybe maybe Victoria Sponge. I quite like that. Oh, I but, was gonna say that. But, I was gonna say with, that. But with like cream, you know, like proper cream, like in it, you know, is that's how it would, would be would be nice. I think. Uh, well, hang on. What, what do you mean? Because Victoria Sponge is like buttercream filling. Yeah, jam. but then with like proper cream filling, not buttercream. Oh, but mm, okay, no, no, yeah, I'm, I'm into that. I'm into that. Yeah, I so. would just, in my mind, I'm thinking sort of like you know, Tesco finest, like three ninety nine, bit of dusting on top, buttercream, mm-hmm. a little bit of jam, done. Yeah, I go for that. Oh, Kaz has messaged us. James, will you be getting Persona Five Strikers later this month? I know you are a fan of the original game, so I was wondering if you're interested in the sequel. It's another Muso game, but it's game combines the real-time action combat associated with Musou games 
um, with the turn-based gameplay of the Persona series. It seems like an interesting mix, so maybe you'll feel less fatigued with this one since you only just finished Hyrule Warriors. Other than that, it's apparently another great game to be had with the original cast of characters from the original game. See, it's funny this, because I did consider this, actually, when I saw this, because I, I was a huge fan of Persona 5, and I really did love the characters, but... I have been put off by the fact that I played Hyrule Warriors recently and I don't think I can play another Musou game, even if it's like slightly different, even if they've, you know, it's got the like the strategy side to it. I just can't do it at the moment. Although it may be something I'll pick up later because it does it does look interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I like Persona 5 or Persona games in general. Are the, uh, it's like a series where everyone says they're so good. And when I had my Vita, it was like, get Persona 4 Gold and get Persona 4 Gold. And I didn't get it. Um, and then people were like, Persona 5 and it's, you know, it's probably a version of it on Game Pass or something. I've, you know, and I was like, oh, do I? But then also, it's like a, isn't it a massive like seventy-hour game or something yeah, crazy? You, you, you're looking at like even like minimum like just a sort of critical pass sort of thing. You're looking at about sixty to seventy hours for it. It's they are long games, but they're very involved and very good with amazing music that isn't chip yeah. Like I surprisingly absolutely loved that Final Fantasy VII remake, and maybe it's not a maybe it's not a surprise. Because, you know, it's just a fun game and there's a new combat mode. But I kind of want something else like that again. And mm-hmm. I know that was like a much shorter, much more condensed version of Final Fantasy. And it had like its nice action combat. But I just want... I don't think you get on with Persona in that case. Yeah. The original Final Fantasy VII is actually on Game Pass. And I'm like, do I... You know, because I, I want to finish the remake. I didn't listen to any spoiler cast, even though I desperately wanted to. Because then I was like, don't do that because it ruined the entire Final Fantasy VII for you. And I'm always like, oh, it's downloaded on my Xbox now. And I'm like, oh, do I just like try and chip away that like five minutes a week or whatever? And I see think if you I would can... hate it. I, I really don't. I, I, okay, I don't think you'd hate it, but I, I don't think it would hold your attention, honestly. I really don't. Yeah, and I think random battles and stuff, isn't it? It's yeah, which would I think would would do your head in after a while because it is yeah. The, those, those games were were very good at the time, but they there are a lot of problems still with that with the formula that they um that they had. Yeah, because I just really um I just wanted to see what happens next in the story. And as you know, I think I saw something on Twitter about there there could be like a remake part two announcement in the next couple of weeks. I don't know if that's a rumor or what, but if that's the case. That'd be amazing because I'm I, in my mind I'm not expecting that to be out for. Another two and a bit years or something crazy. James, you should you should play that. Yeah, I mean, I will. That's uh, actually I probably it's won't. So good. I don't know if I'll it, ever play. It. But it, is it though? Because David said it was rubbish and he, he wasn't impressed at all. And well, like Sean it, never played it. Well, yeah, Sean never played it. Dave Dave got to a a crucial story bit and then just like after that happened, he's like, "Fuck this." Um, I mm. think you should absolutely play it, James. It's so good. The battle I mean, the battle how- mechanics are brilliant. I, I like the story. It looks great. Compelling until the end. How long is it, like roughly? I think it took me fifty-five hours. Okay, that's but still But also, quite long. you know, I'm slow and rubbish at games, so uh, mm-hmm. I think you'll probably get through it in twenty. I think if you've even mainlined it, it'll probably be close to thirty. Uh, I don't know. Okay, next is from Mafro. Hi, James and Matt. Good to have interface back. Uh, it's been too long since the last episode. Almost three and a half years. Which major non-gaming tech announcements or advancements have happened since then? that you wish you had covered on a podcast? There has been loads, hasn't there? I mean, there's been loads of things that have happened, but not things that we'd ever be able to talk about because the others would be really bored. And mind you, yeah, everyone would be really bored. Yeah, so not on this show. Um, no, yeah. I mean, I, I do think every now and then, oh, I wish you did still did, I still, still did it in the face. And for those of you listening who don't know, yeah, James and I briefly, well, for like, we, we did like 30 episodes of a tech podcast. Stupidly, we thought, let's, in the week... The computer game show was launching. <laughs> or was it a week before? It was the week like, before. I think, yeah. let's, let's also do a tech podcast. Yeah, why and, not? Um, we can do that. It's yeah, uh, no problem. We can do two. Uh, We're once. knowledgeable. <laughs> we smashed 30 episodes, which I think was okay. Um, but it had to end because it's just getting, you know, the computer game show was getting too big, baby, uh, was, to yeah. satisfy both. One of them had to go. And uh, obviously, James and I wanted to keep in the face, but, you know, Sean and Dave were like, please, please stay on. The computer game show, please. We won't be the same. Same. Um, so, so we had to give that up, sadly. Um, but I, I do think, oh, you know, it would be cool to do one every now and then. But, but also, I, I thought, God, there's been nothing happening in tech for ages. It, imagine we're still doing that weekly tech podcast. It. Well, I, don't, I mean, there has been things. I mean, there's like you know the new 
you see, the trouble is, is we generally just talked about Apple stuff all the time, which also limited our audience like massively yeah, but, like, and made people, people hate shit us. about that. But like, <laughs> there are podcasts which just about Apple stuff, like ATP and others, which are fo- like we both have iPhones and we like Apple stuff, so obviously we're gonna talk about it. You know. I know, but it did. As I said, it made it limited our audience and made people hate us. So that was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was part of the problem. And yeah, that's, it did actually. That's, that's, that's probably why we wouldn't talk about it so much anymore. But I don't know. Talk yeah. about like the M1 chip. That's interesting. You know, that's uh, that's coming soon. Yeah, it's potentially like you know, absolute yeah, game changing. Mm-hmm. What what that chip's gonna do in terms of battery power and stuff as well. And anyway, it would be stop because people are switching yeah. off in their in their ones. Mm. Um, Let's go to Charlie Teapot. Hey, Farley and Murray. Glad to see the big dogs are taking full control of <laughs> TCGS pod tonight, expecting big things. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to stop by and say thanks to Matt. Your previous Sekiro streams are top-notch, and it breaks my heart to think that we might not be getting any more streams from you, especially when listening to how excited you were at the thought of putting together your, your new streaming setup. I put an order in for Sekiro on eBay last night and look forward to playing through it alongside your previous Twitch vids. Oh, don't do that. There's there's probably like 12 hours of that while I was probably stuck on one boss. <laughs> uh, also, I wanted to step in and stick up for Matt, as he's been getting a lot of stick recently for spending a couple of weeks collecting reward points. Anyone remember when Turner spent 10 years collecting orbs in Crackdown? I got your back, brother. Please come back. The TCGS Twitch channel needs you. When we're done. Thanks, Charlie. Um, do you think me playing random games is comparable to Dave spending 10 years collecting orbs in Crackdown? Uh, no, not not in any way, shape or form. Yeah, shame really. I mean, yeah. I, but the way you're talking about it, I'm not the only one doing this rewards thing. There's literally tens of us. It's I know, um, look, Matt. I'm not disputing. There's a lot. There's a lot of sickos out there. You know that are doing this sort of thing. <laughs> you were doing it yourself at one point. I you, was. Yeah. You quit. And then I just couldn't be bothered. Quitter. Yeah, I just couldn't be bothered anymore. Although I did notice the other day, I was ahead of you this week on uh, on achievements. So. Yeah, yeah, well, I, well, yeah, but because now, now I'm in my I'm in my hibernation period for achievements, so I'm trying to minimize them to save them for the next big, you know, next, next big push. blowout. Mm. Uh, on, uh, so on the um, reward points Reddit's where like you know the talk about reward points and what you can do to get more. Um, there's like obviously every week there's like okay, if you play this game you get certain points and stuff. And one of the things they always put in those guides are like there's no achievements for this one, or you can like. You don't. You won't get achievement. And at first, I was like, "Well, why are you pull? Why are you focused on whether you get achievement or not?" But people need to know that or want to know that because they need to like. They want. They can go back and like. I'll save that achievement for next time. Also, apparently, as people that once they've got one achievement in a game, it's like obviously then on their profile, and they just they have to then one hundred percent that game. So they're like, <laughs> I, I don't want to play a game and get a random achievement because they'll never go get all the rest of them. Which is a, I mean, I think that is another. There, there is a lot of issues related to this, isn't there? I mean, it's yeah. What have Microsoft done? Like by, <laughs> by sort of creating this system, it's, it's like free real estate. It's free money. It's, if it's feeding kind of. into all people's all sorts of like addictions and all sorts of problems, it's it's crazy. Yeah. What well, what I also think is like really weird. So yeah, you if you search your Bing, you get like points and there's like dailies and stuff. Um. So. What people are doing, obviously, and myself included, like you load up Bing in the morning, you do like what well, I search for dog breeds or cat breeds because there's all the, the things at the top. You just click them all <laughs> done. But like Bing, when I look at analytics, obviously that's not like a huge percentage of the audience. But mm-hmm. there was like, it's just like they're just all their insights and analytics are just like out the window because there's a percentage of audience who are just doing mad stuff just to get their points every day. Yeah. They're like, well, like when I was in my previous job and I was doing it, but back then, back in the old days, I would like, I would search A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like do the whole alphabet. Mm-hmm. And then one day, this guy, Adam, who used to work next to me, is next to me, it's like, what the hell are you doing, Matt? And I'm just like, <laughs> hey, morning, go, go to my desk coffee. I'm like, A, B, C, D, E. Um, obviously, even more mad now if you saw me, I was searching cat breeds every morning, but. Uh, <laughs> It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, where was I? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, Twitch. I, I do miss Twitch, uh, but also I'm just like too busy with work and and stuff at the moment. Um, but I will come back. I I, I do miss streaming. Um, it just got a bit much for me, like you know, Christmas and and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I do really want to stream Dark Souls, even though people are saying not to do that. But I I do and uh, not Dark Souls. Um, Demon Souls. Demon Souls. Yeah. Because I haven't planned played it before, and I I kind of want to get back into it. But it's not going to be for a while until. Till life calms down, but I, I do miss it. I will be back. It's not not over, and 
you know, I, sometimes I think, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll jump on for a quick one, but I don't know. Um, oh, he'll be back. You, you guys are all doing great stuff without me, so you, you don't need me. I can just, uh, I can just get the free money. It's great. Have you, have you seen the little home stream? <laughs> New <laughs> <laughs> no one has. I don't think anyone has. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but speaking of streams, should we get on to the end bit? Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, what do we um, got? Sean. Yeah, Sean. You are. Yeah, Sean streaming on Thursday. Uh, he's. I think. I mean, he's still doing all creatures great in Sean. Where on Thursday nights at nine, he will be streaming a game where he takes the role of an animal detective. I believe that's the premise of the streaming series. That is Thursday at nine. This mm-hmm. Friday at nine. Hmm, what's happening, James? Are you streaming? Uh, yes, I should be, but I haven't actually decided what it's going to be yet. I'm still mm. thinking about doing that, um, you know, the Walking Dead game, uh, which was the VR one. I'm, I'm considering yes. playing that. If, Saints and if, Sinners. Yeah, if I do, it will be on, on YouTube again, obviously, because of the continuing uh, Twitch problems uh, that we've got. Yep, still has not been fixed um, by right. Twitch or PlayStation. But yeah, so um, so Sean, uh, yeah, Sean is Thursday at 9. Uh, James will come back to in a minute. And Saturday, hopefully at 9, uh, Dave is going to continue fishing. But th- that's a bit up in the air. If it happens, mm-hmm. it happens. Again, they're there, apart from James's one, they're on twitch.tv slash TCGS code for James on fr- on Friday. He's streaming on YouTube because there's like an issue with Twitch um, and his account or the TCGS account. So on Fridays, there's obviously a link we'll tweet out at TCGS Co. Otherwise, just go to youtube.com slash TCGS Co. And they'll, it, you'll see it there or you can go slash live, but just, just go there and subscribe and all the usual bits um but back on twitch if you have amazon prime you've got twitch prime gaming and with it get one free sub a month and we'd love it if you went over to our channel gave us your free monthly subscription we really really appreciate it so thank you for that uh we're on patreon.com slash tcgs we get exclusive monthly podcasts which is doing to record this month uh monthly talks over which you can watch live and this month we're doing in the cuisining the first two of which we did last year and they're both available to watch on our youtube channel well worth going over to watch. It's basically a Sean Bell hosted quiz show um, with um, uh, mostly James cheating actually. Uh, but and, and whilst ridiculous. Dave and I try and try and get points legitimately, but James cheats and and, and wins. Uh, but that's happening this month. We haven't quite nailed down a date. Hopefully, I hope to get a date down nailed down pretty quick. So we, it's not just us saying it's happening tomorrow. We want to give you a bit more warning. But uh, in the is happening this month. Go to patreoncom TCGS to see all the tiers and that and the website is tcgs.co for everything else there's a store on there links to our social channels all the usual bits well it's been a weird one hasn't it i mean let's be honest it's a bit strange i think the listeners would agree yeah yep i'm looking forward to the uh, no i'm not looking forward to the feedback uh but hopefully david and sean will be back next week and uh thank you for listening and thank you for being here matt no thank you james thanks for for, thanks for you know, putting out the stops and I mean again it really is you know thanks for getting through it <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah it really is this week yeah, but I'd rather pretty... do this than not put anything else out imagine we said you know no pod this week well <laughs> some people might think brilliant yeah better than this drivel we just heard almost certainly don't 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 preempt the yeah. feedback thanks everyone um, anyway bye bye